Hey everybody, Randy and Jason Scola here along with Daniel Van I'm Kirk, right here. The hosts of Dumb People Town. And our guest this week is a fantastic guest, Doug Benson. Welcome, Doug. Thank you. So happy to have you Great on. Great to be here. Gotta run. Wait a minute, no, Doug. The show. I'll see you later. No. Oh, we gotta do the show and then leave? Yes. yes. All right. How long does it take? <laughs> About 49 minutes. Okay, I can give you five of that. Perfect. <laughs> Boom. Hey guys, Weiger here. You know... We all want a snack, but the temptation is to reach for something unhealthy, some sort of junk food. Well, you know what? You can start snacking healthy with Nature Box. Now, Nature Box makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you, created with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, so you can feel great about snacking. I've had some Nature Box treats, and let me tell you, the ones I enjoy, the jalapeno cashews, they got a lot of great nut options there. Also, the sweet and salty nut medley. Look, I'm a nut for nuts. Nutty power clusters, delicious. Peanut butter nom noms, look, if you want a sweet treat, but something that's not going to tip the scales too far in a caloric sense, you could do a lot worse than them peanut butter nom noms, which are quite, quite tasty. A um, lot of great nut options if you're a nut guy. Or if you like other stuff, you know, they got their they got aged cheddar lentil loops. Got Granny Smith apples if you just want some dried fruit and fruit chews. All sorts of options. A, a ton of it's honestly overwhelming how many different things you can get from Nature Box. They recently made their service even better. Now you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required, and you can cancel anytime. It's simple. Go to naturebox.com, check out their snack catalog. There are over a hundred snacks to choose from. They're constantly adding delicious new snacks. Choose the snacks you want, they'll deliver them right to your door. With Nature Box, you'll never get bored. New snacks each month inspired by real customer feedback. And if you try a snack you don't like, they'll replace it for free. So right now, uh, you'll save even more. NatureBox is offering our fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash doughboys. We know if you're listening to this, you love food, you love to snack. Go to naturebox.com slash doughboys for 50% off your first order. That's naturebox.com slash doughboys. Deflate gate, spy gate, eligible receiver gate, plow gate. Though they've amassed more Super Bowl titles than any team in the modern era, the legacy of the New England Patriots is forever tainted by their numerous high-profile scandals in which they flouted the NFL's rules for a decisive advantage. Now, Wendy's faces a scandal of its own, Mitch gate. Though they triumphed over Chick-fil-A in a unanimous decision in the sandwich region, the penalty imposed by tournament commissioner Evan Susser means they must compete this week without the asset that earned them a ticket to munch madness, the spicy chicken sandwich. Their competitor, Wingstop. The surprise winner of the Wings region over favorite B-dubs, will their atomic Cinderella story continue, or will they be turned back into a lemon pepper pumpkin owned by Rick Ross? Whoever prevails will advance to a three-way finals against Popeyes and the winner of Fat Chance Kitchen, the tournament's loser bracket. Whose birds will emerge victorious in the battle for the most prestigious trophy in chain restaurant competition, the Dave Thomas Cup, this week on Doughboys. The second and final matchup of the semi-soft final round of Munch Madness, the Tournament of Champions, Chicken Fight, presented by Starburns Industries, Wendy's, versus Wingstop. Let's go! Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're a production of feralaudio.com. I'm Nick Weiger alongside my co-host, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Mitch, how you doing? Weiger, you know, I wanted to say, well, first of all, you did the verses and let's it go but well. Yeah, I finally got to a point where I pulled it off competently. I mean, it still wasn't that good. <laughs> no, but, it wasn't good. <laughs> but also, you looked at me and our guest, who we'll introduce in just a second, and you said that... I I wrote this intro for you two. You guys are going to like this. Yeah. And then it was, we, of course, we don't like it. <laughs> We're Patriots fans. And also Mitch Gate. <laughs> that was Susser's name for the scandal. Uh, all right. Well, it's what we're running with. I mean, look, we could say that all the gate based scandals are kind of poorly named. It's because, all it's all based off Watergate. Right. Watergate, which was a hotel. We have to, to put a stop to that. And it, well, I mean, I could go on and on about 
how Deflategate is garbage, which almost everyone, <laughs> almost every person, like every columnist thinks that Deflategate yeah. is bullshit. I actually agree with you. I think that Deflategate is a non-scandal, but it's it, fun no, to it, talk it about. It is a scandal because it's an NFL scandal. Like, it should be a bigger deal because the NFL was insane. Yeah, like, Goodell, Roger Goodell was insane. Goodell is horrible. He's, he's horrible. He's really bad at his job. And, 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 and like, it should be a bigger deal that, that uh, of how, how he reacted to everything. Right. And how the NFL... Also, didn't give out the information when they tested football. It's insane. Yeah. It's all it's all insane stuff. Spygate, by the way, for those who don't know, I'm just going to quickly go over it. <laughs> I just want to quickly, quickly, quickly go over this. Okay. Spygate, the New England Patriots got in trouble for filming games during during the games. They, they had cameras set up on the sideline, which is allowed, but it's not yeah. allowed in certain areas of the of of the field. You can't you can't tape the ga- the game from certain areas of the field, and that rule changed. In the next season, they they were still recording from the areas where you they used to be able to record from areas areas <laughs> that you that, that you used to be able to record from. That is all that Spygate is. Uh-huh. This, the the Patriots never recorded any sort of walkthrough of a practice of the Super Bowl, which is that there were allegations that they did that. It wasn't true. So what they did is like Spygate itself is so small and not even that big of a deal. The Flake Gate is garbage. Uh-huh. The Patriots are better than the Lakers as a team. Oh, boy. Okay. So... Hey, uh, <laughs> so our, our guest just uh, had a pitch he showed me on the on the notes app on his phone. Uh, Mitch Gate should be called Inflate Gate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's introduce him. Uh, you know him from our. I can't. I can't say anything back to him <laughs> because you guys have a unique status between the mm-hmm. two of you. Uh, the guest from our Buffalo Wild Wings episode, an executive producer and writer for The Simpsons, Matt Selman, returning to the podcast. Hi, Matt. Hi, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> honored, honored to be back. Oh, uh, we're, we're thrilled to have you. I, and I should recap for for anyone who might be joining the podcast uh, midstream, and maybe this is the first episode you listen to. We're in the midst of our tournament of the best chain restaurant. This is chicken. the first episode they're going to listen to. I, people do. We we get new listeners every every week so mm, maybe someone's li- they won't in. listen again so you don't have to explain right. it. <laughs> well most episodes begin with you ranting with tears in your eyes about how <laughs> the nfl was unfair to the patriots you know that that's true i believe you i know i know it's fun to needle you over but i think i generally agree with you deflate gate is seems like complete garbage i mean you agree right selman yeah it's complete garbage but um talk to the rings yeah, talk to the rings. I agree with that. I 100% right. agree with that. Plus, the Patriots are going to get those those picks back through ingenious trading and deal making, Brandon Cooks and whatnot. Mm-hmm. They they actually they they actually might be. There's a lot of people who don't like NFL talk on the pod, but sometimes we got to get into it. Sometimes the Patriots look really, really. They 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 like like I'm like they are they going to lose next? Year? They're they look even better. A Super Bowl championship team, right? Is is now even more stacked. How old which, is Brady? Which, he's going to be, I guess, forty this wow. next season, right? Which which maybe I'm wrong on that number, but but also uh, that makes me also think that maybe they will be bad because it's so. It's like the the lake. Remember when the Lakers got uh, what was that? The, Dwight Howard and Steve Nash. Are you talking about that? Oh, are you talking about earlier with the, earlier. In the Shaq era when they get Carl Malone and Gary Payton? Carl Car, Car Malone and Gary Payton. Yeah, I, I, I thought for sure they were like. They they were a, a Carl Malone injury away from from beating the maybe beating the Detroit Pistons. I mean the Pistons were really good that season. Yeah, um, in the finals, but yeah, that that team just sometimes this the super team just doesn't quite come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Golden State this year. Mm-hmm. Oh speaking, boy! It might be too early to say that. But speaking maybe. of golden, this chicken right now. <laughs> Am I skipping ahead? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll like, get there. Someone, well, go, go on. Uh, 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 someone, what I was going to say is that you were here for the Buffalo Wild Wings episode, and Buffalo Wild Wings has been eliminated from the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any feelings on that? Well, let's just. Right now, let's just check my stocks here for a second. Okay, because you're yeah, an investor. In I invested in Buffalo Wild Wings right after doing the last podcast where I went there and was so impressed by the franchise, mm-hmm. the choices. The I think a good investment regardless. And it is, I think the last time I checked, I was down about $2,000. Oh, wow. So, wow. <laughs> you know, the, it's, it's kind of a cyclical... It really only does as well as the NFL. Speaking of Deflate Gate and oh, Patriots. interesting. So it's like it, their fortunes are really rise and fall with, 
you know, people's attachment to sports narratives, right. particularly NFL. Well, Can, then football. March they should be on the rise then, right? That's people true. will be packing in for college That's basketball. True. Maybe it'll go up too. And right? also P- everyone going in uh, because of Munch Madness to, to mm-hmm. see if B-dubs deserve to win or not. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's going to get all his money back. <laughs> uh, speaking of companies, can we can we talk about what we did the other day? What are you talking about? Doughboys. Oh, you're you're talking about how we so yeah we we formed a Doughboys Corporation. Oh wow! For podcast related income, mm-hmm. and we went and did, we went and saw my accountant, and also who's also Maddie Smith's accountant, very nice man, Doug Albano. And too much info on this accountant already. Oh, I mean, he's a good man. He was a good guy. <laughs> he's also Maddie Smith's. Mm, Maddie's, interesting. Yeah, I'm given a wreck from a previous guest of the podcast. Oh, we love Maddie. I'm just saying that's a boring point. All right, fine. I'm sorry for saying that I have the same accountant as a friend. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit this out. We went to see it. Never, my, it never gets. Edited. Yeah, don't, no, we never don't, edit don't anything edit. out. We went to see my accountant. And to set up a corporation for podcast-related income for a variety of reasons. And, also, and I just want to say that yeah. you're looking at the president of the Doughboys Corporation. Oh, wow. Michael Mitchell is the president wow. of Doughboys Corp. And what are, what are you? I'm the vice president, vice president. and the maid. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the maid. My, my title is se- uh, vice, I'm vice president and treasurer, and you are president and secretary. Yeah, so you're like the Wario. Well, we, I, hey, I'll be the Wario. I mean, you're physically, you're like the Wario. Hey. <laughs> but I'll be the Wario's cool. I'll be the who's, Wario. Who's the Wa Doughboys Corporation? <laughs> <laughs> well, like the, the evil version of the Doughboys Corporation yeah, exactly. that's, that's competent. I feel and like well we're managed. the evil version of some good <clears throat> Doughboys Corporation. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. That the old boys is bringing in some income. Were to, were we to be worthy of incorporating um, S corp or C corp? It's an S corp. S corp. Okay, so that's gonna have some effects on your what you spend on what you attribute to healthcare and that kind of thing. Right. But uh, actually, as I was waiting here to be on today's podcast. I went to a website called Patreon and signed up for Doughboys Doubles. Wow. Oh, Selman. Selman, thank you. The support for that has been very, very nice. Nice for everyone who, who subscribed. Everyone who subscribed. Spencer, uh, our, our guest on the Doughboy Double, he subscribed. There's a lot, of, a lot of great support, and we appreciate it. Doug Albano pretty much told us, he was like, someday you guys might make some money off this. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Right, it was we, all speculative. We, 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 didn't, we didn't realize that. This was such a, a thing a to do to do this to to do to set up a corporate uh, right. It's yeah. not that much of a to do. Well, yeah, Patreon sounds like the some kind of new government system that we'll all have to register for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, like uh, if you don't sign up for Patreon, you're a traitor and have to go in one of the camps. It does. It does sound kind it, of it has, evil, it has like a, evil, a nefarious, yeah, right, jingoistic, you know, fascistic name. Right. It's like in Final Fantasy VII, the Shinra Corporation. There's always like this. Uh, what's another uh, a ominous corporation from a science fiction film? What's Whalen the, Kitani. Yeah. What's the, what's the corporation in uh, in RoboCop? Oh shit! Oh, that's a, I that's look a this good up. one. Yeah, you got to look that up. All right, but yeah, you, you guys know what we're talking about. Operating within that genre, it does kind of have an ominous name. I met um, the guy uh, who in in RoboCop, the guy who gets covered in uh, the toxic sludge and then gets hit by a car. Whoa! Uh, what's his? He's a director. He's like a he's like a director in in Hollywood. Yeah. And, I know you mean. I don't know his name. Yeah, yeah. I I, I I've met that guy. Omni Consumer Products. Yes. Yeah, we're like, Patreon is like an omni consumer products type of company. Yeah. Um, well, it says, hopefully- it says, I mean, this is public information here, so I'm not revealing the secrets of Doughboys Corporation. It says you have 1,836 patrons so far. Yeah, we got a, we got a decent number got, of subscribers. That's yeah. pretty good. Times, yeah. I mean, do the math, guys. Times five divided by two. Now, now we're all minus <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> now, now we're all very. Uh, now Nick and I are very self conscious about it. That's good. The excellence deserves to be rewarded. Oh, Keep well, sh- thanks, thanks, Selman. Which I mean, the podcast is far from excellent. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah. bad podcast. Well, but <laughs> it's certainly. Th- there's a lot worse for sure. I That's think it's true. <laughs> there are a lot of worse podcasts than ours. People like to watch like, like. Like people get hit by trains and stuff, you yeah. know. They like to watch those dark web 
videos or whatever. And I, I feel like people listening to us is kind of similar. They like to, <laughs> they like to hear two fuck ups. They want to see what goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So, and to recap on the, the rules of the tournament real quick. So sides stay on the sidelines. Drinks are in the Gatorade jug. Also on the sidelines. We're just reviewing chicken here. Uh, a few people on Twitter pitch drinks are in the sink, which I think is pretty good, but drinks are in the sink. Yeah. Like you're pouring the drinks down the sink. The sink that is on the sideline of a basketball court. Well, foot or football. Or are we, mean, is, is it football or Mark, basketball? Much madness should be basketball. I guess we should do basketball. We've always been t- thinking about it in football terms. Yeah, it's not. It, we're, it's not a football game. All right, you're right. It should be basketball. All so right, then we so need a new one for sides too. Great. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Sink the sink, I guess, is in the locker room. I'm just gonna. Oh, I guess we'll just overrule that. It'll be the, the drinks will still be in the Gatorade jug. Why did you even consider it? Is my question to you, you weirdo? A bunch of people were like, "It's got to be drinks in the sink." Like enough people were, I was like, "I gotta say something." Really? Yeah, I was getting pestered about so saying like two people said something. At least a half dozen people were were saying that because <laughs> I, I originally I was saying drinks are in the stink. We amended it to drinks are in the J- Gatorade jug, also on the sidelines because stink was too amorphous. Uh huh. And then. And also sounds kind of dirty. Are there really Gatorades jugs on the sideline of basketball games, too? Maybe not. I feel like somewhere. I see people with little cups of Gatorade. I don't know where they're being dispensed from. Yeah. Oh, well. well, well, we'll discuss this after the podcast. We'll have a breakdown. Hey, you know, if you out there know whether or not there are Gatorade jugs on the sideline, uh, hashtag Jug Truth. Jug Truth? Yeah. Let us know the truth about jugs. Speaking of which, I fucked up. Mm-hmm. I, was in, I was talking to someone about this. I was in Paris... And I said, Pulp Fiction Fiction. Mm -hmm. It turns out that someone tweeted at us, right? Susser was telling me last last night that someone tweeted at us. You were talking about, this might have been on a a double episode. Yeah. And and you were talking about how the the Royale with cheese does not exist in Paris as opposed to what they talk about in in Pulp Fiction. And then someone hit you back with a... a It does exist. And and, and, and I got to look through my tweets. I haven't looked through them this week or whatever, but I, I... I, I think it does exist. I, I think I think that I fucked up, but to give me credit, I was every McDonald's that I saw in London and Paris. I didn't eat anything from McDonald's, mm-hmm. but I went into a couple of them. Right, they were all touch screen. There was there were no there was no place to order. There was no like board with, so weird. with menu items on them. Yeah, so, I talk about dystopian. Yeah, well, I just was at a Clippers game. Here's an indication of the quality of the seats. Oh my God, Selman, that's insane. <laughs> Let me let me take a look. Oh wow, someone <laughs> is holding up a, a extreme close up of Blake Griffin, star for the basically. Clippers. Yeah, basically his ass and back. That's my daughter. Wow, look at oh, that's she's cute. So I'm looking now at these pictures. There are if they see if any the players are drinking anything. The food there is free also if you sit there. Selman, Makes- I feel like part of this appearance is you just bragging about your stock holdings and <laughs> your Clippers season. Well, you know, it, I feel like that's like my like comedic <laughs> persona a little bit. That like, can you believe how much? This dickhole <laughs> brags about his medium level success, <laughs> <clears throat> but then like so many people don't think the idea that anyone would ever say that is a joke. Right, that it comes off as dickish, and it's also a little bit genuine. Someone I may so, have- so, <laughs> so it really is a low ups- right. it's a low upside move. But you know, I also like to provide like it's like a you know a little pinhole view into the lifestyles of the. Los Angeles. Look, there's uh, James Harden. That's pretty great. Uh, you Those know, are good seats. That's a good game to wow. go to. Wow, Houston Rockets standout. That's why I had to go see Harden play. I was Possible like, MVP this year. I yeah, love, I love he, he was. Be- he was like a giant ballerina out there. It was amazing. He's amazing. We talked about this on past episodes. Selman, for Christmas one year, bought me a peanut butter stirrer <laughs> so that I could stir up the peanut butter at Simpsons. <laughs> And just and real quick, Mitch, uh, cl- clarify your guys' working relationship. Just re- remind everyone. Selman was so Selman was you're the, you uh, Selman was one of like the first L.A. foodie guys I ever knew because I started working at The Simpsons in 2007, right when the writers' strike happened. Basically, right? Mm-hmm. I, I I joined right right then and after and, and when it was ending, and and Selman was so basically your job is as as my job was basically to. Get lunches, get coffees are two big, huge everyday things that you have to do that are the biggest. And then do whatever people ask you to do and and then highlight scripts and send them out to actors and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Set up table reads, set up records. And that was basically it. And besides that, anytime, you know, the writers needed something, getting dinner, which hope, you know, we never want it to happen. The right, And then, you know, the writers don't want to stay late. You know? Right. But, 
but that was that was kind of that was the whole setup of of the job and it it's, it was it was it was it, was, it wasn't a hard job yeah but it was it was long long hours and the, and then you always have to kind of do stuff here and there but right. I love all the, I loved all the guys there and all, and all the the whole staff was was great but like Mitch you know you always say like oh Selman I'll always see you as this authority figure or whatever but I, come on we're we're peers now we're you're a writer, you're an actor, I'm a writer, we're just writers together. We're all three peers sitting at a table like, <laughs> like you, you did a voice on The Simpsons. I, I I said, would you come lend your talents to the show? And you said yes, you short you shared it with us. And Selman gave, Selman made a dream of mine come true and I am very grateful. And you I made a dream of mine come true. The, the, the Boston <laughs> episode of The Simpsons from was it this past season? The previous yeah. season, right? Mm-hmm. Very yeah. funny episode. Thank you're you. you're in a very uh your guy, the guy you voiced, Mitch, is in pretty great shape. That's what, they, they That's what you have to point out. I feel like, yeah, it, but also it's very Mitch like. It has, yeah. a, it has a, it has a Mitch vibe to him, right? Yeah, he's like a big hulking dude, but he's like, he's like you if you got, ju- you got just jacked. Yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty jacked. Yeah, sorry that he wasn't fatter, why? No, I'm not saying. I, I was like, should no, we, I just, should we go least... back and change it? Because we can do things with digital now. <laughs> I'm not calling you on to use a post-production process to plump up Mitch's character design. I think that it was it was very much in the spirit of you as a man, but he was also like just a very a jacked version of you. Yes, yes, he was. Well, and he was great. He was a great... It was a dream come true to be on there. Selman helped me out. You know what? Here's a little behind the scenes. At one point, you had me read for the Brady character, too, mm-hmm. when, when Homer is, is, is... I did a bad job. But, <laughs> no, but, no, no, no. Yeah, that didn't do great, but but also I we I, didn't know what he wanted the voice to be. When I heard what you when I heard what you wanted, I was like, oh, that's what they want. Like a like a, it was it was it was hard for me to. to but the get guy it. who did it was Michael Chiklis. Oh, that's right. Oh, this, uh, and then there's another great who's appearance. like BFF of Tom Tommy, Tommy Brady as he calls him. So like just to have Chiklis pretend to be a Brady type guy in this poking fun role just added more insider fun. The commission, the shield. To, right, is and the, the thing in the original Fantastic Four, and the thing in the original Fantastic Four. Now he's Four. on that baby Batman show, Gotham. Oh, is he? Oh, yes, he's Batman in Babies. Batman Babies. <laughs> he is like the craziest Patriots fan. I mean, he really is insane. Because the one time I went to the Super Bowl, sorry again, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> there was the, the Seattle the year two years ago, mm-hmm. and he was in the like Fox Man. Fox van afterwards. Patriots just won yeah. an amazing semi come from behind and then amazing interception, like as exciting as a game as you ever could have seen. And Chicken was was in the van ranting about the refs, about how bad they were and how they hated the Pats. Like, we just won. <laughs> right. We're in a van. Olaf from Frozen is here <laughs> in the van. It's like we we're about to go eat fancy food. Did he yell it's clobbering time and destroy the referees? <laughs> no, he was just so angry about the refs. I, mean, I was kind of angry about the refs in that game, too. We're terrible fans. I guess. We're, we're, I we're, like, we're, we're like, annoying fans I, in a win. lot of ways. They did win. Is that a Boston characteristic? Because one thing I've, I think I've noticed about you, Mitch, and I don't know if this is something generalizable to people from Boston, people from Massachusetts, but... It seems like you always have something to complain about. Like it's like no, oh, like thanks, Nick. No, I. But I think this is true. Like it seems like whatever success you reach or whatever, however well something goes, there's always something that you're going to complain about. I, I mean, that's that's. Do you think that's is that inaccurate? I mean, but I, I also I feel like the 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 way that the Patriots have been treated in the last few years is a reason for that. Like I, like I feel like the Patriots have because okay. I don't really complain about the Celtics too much. Yeah, you you'd say that I'm not that annoying of a fan because I'll, I'll sum up to you what I think it is, and I wonder mm-hmm. if someone will agree. Go for it. But I I don't think I'm that annoying of a fan. Do you? Think I don't I, think so. I don't think you're I, that annoying of a fan. I think it's I think it's kind of endearing how much you care. I and, I love the Patriots. I love the Celtics, and I love the Red Sox. Those are my three. Mm-hmm. I, I used to love the Red Sox the most, but maybe Patriots more than than any team now. And I really love the Celtics. And you and I. Kind of, you know, like you and I, the Celtics Lakers rivalry. We kind of that's how we bonded a little bit. Too. Yeah, we have some playful feuding over that. Yeah, and, and we're some, both we're both big basketball fans. You, yeah, you actually you probably, have the green Celtics mouth puff. No, that's, that's true. true. You, should, yeah. you should get a purple one. <laughs> For, <laughs> and you each have to speak into. So the we're other spitting ones. onto the other color or whatever. <laughs> that our microphone puffs are are, are green and 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 mine is red. Uh, we have to show no wire or something another amusing. You could keep so like well, but it's human nature to also just be to be to complain a lot, right? Yeah. Sure. 
Well, I, I, I think that I think that most. Hey, how about that? Wait, is that you as a kid? Young Selman and showing my Celtics green. Selman, Selman is. Uh, I want to say you're like 14 there. I'm not sure how old you think you're. 12. You are. 12, and you've got a shirt that says "Let's get it back, Celtics." And some some nice green short shorts. <laughs> yeah, looking very sharp. Show that to Mitch. I, 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 I saw it. And I I love that photo very very much. That's great. We'll provide a link. On that's the like website. that's like if you made like a Boston movie that took place in like the eighties or something like that. Right. You'd have to see that. You'd have to see that guy walk by. <laughs> Young Mitch would have beaten the unholy crap out of me, <laughs> even, even with the, even with the shirt. The, which is saying something because there was then there was a crowd of people waiting to beat me up. Too. <laughs> um, I think the Boston fans are annoying because there's a lot of a lot of the fandom is people that come are the college students who come into the city. Okay. And they're and like after you know, like after the Red Sox went in the riding, like that's so much of the college kids and like the annoying they're they Wait, you be, real, you think transplants come there and I think it's and, transplants and then also like the the outskirts. I think the city of Boston as a whole I don't think that the fans are as annoying. There are some for sure. We have some bad fans. All right, come on. We're we're not that bad. I'm telling you. It's I not- think I think you guys always. I think there's always complaining, and maybe it has. Maybe it's somewhat I went to justified. a Dodgers game, and I was wearing a Red Sox hat at a Dodgers game. They weren't playing the Red Sox, mm-hmm. and they threatened <laughs> to beat me up. Well, why the fuck were you wearing a Red Sox hat to because a random it's a, Dodgers it's game? American League, and yeah, it's national. It's like saying, why would you wear a red? bandana into the Crips territory. <laughs> like, well, can we, should we challenge the idea that violence is appropriate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, vi- yes. All yes. right, fair. Yes, that's fair. I'm yeah, not saying you, threats Selman. of violence are appropriate, but yeah. I'm, all, I'm also saying that, uh, why would you, it feels like you're looking to, to cause trouble. I would, how? Look, if you wore in the Giants hat, obviously you would deserve permanent Yes, blame. okay, all right. <laughs> like that guy, like that guy, the poor guy. But I, I think, I think, I think that, I think that some college students give us a bad a bad name, and and it's sure well, they, certainly most of the rioting after two thousand four was crazy college people. Yes, it was not like you know Mitch's then alive dad. <laughs> yes, yes, my alive dad now dead mm-hmm. was sitting like in a recliner mm-hmm. and was happy, and he, the, he like you know what I mean like it, it was it was mostly college kids that were in Boston is a big college city right. so. That's kind of. I think. I think that's a, a lot of the obnoxious fans. But do you really think? Because I, I'm not specifically speaking when you were talking about that. I wasn't talking about post victory rioting. Mm, I uh, was talking about just like complaining. I'm talking about just like the general mindset and mood of like. Yeah, maybe that's Boston. I think there's I like, like a, a there's, there's like a defensiveness. I think. Yeah. Like the, all non New York cities. Let's be let's be honest. Have a little bit of a like. Push back. That's true. And that's why I go so hard in Chicago. Also, also New York does too. <laughs> New York does too, but Chicago I give a lot of shit to because they like are just like we're the best one after New York, and like we, maybe we're even better than New York. And people are just like dismiss Boston. I feel like like we're garbage up in the Northeast, and 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 people just don't care about it as much. So I guess that's where a lot of the the chip on the shoulder comes from it's like boston is to new york as like canada is to us it's kind of like both an inferiority and a superiority complex yes it's like like i feel i'm i'm pissed off that i'm disrespected but also i think i'm better than you also a very liberal progressive city and people forget this and we get jokes about it all the time I, right yes I, I won't get too deep into it but like I, like i'm proud of that city my dad worked there and and grew up there and 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 i thought he was a progressive man you know what i mean so so when i do take offense to the city when people rag on it which you do constantly by the way i've toned that down a little bit but yeah. yes i i have done it in the past i the, heard the, the history of boston is complicated i heard that uh elizabeth warren watched that episode and enjoyed it oh that's great oh, that's mm-hmm. nice through my connections very connections did she like my part at all she brought it up yes so that's the one part she liked the most <laughs> <laughs> possible future president Mm. Elizabeth Warren. Who knew? Who knows? Possible future Doughboys guest. <laughs> Even more exciting. <laughs> Selman, do you, where, where specifically in the Boston area or Massachusetts area are you from? I grew up in a town called Watertown, which is nestled, nestled between like Newton and Cambridge and okay. Belmont. It's, it's not as famous a town, although it became famous recently when the uh, Marathon Bomber ran there. Right. That's right. And there, the big shootout was there and... He hit under a boat. Yes. And my dad was bragged to me later. He's like, I know that boat. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, 
army guys with machine guns came to my parents' house and like, kind of did a little walkthrough. My, That's my, crazy. My, my, my cousin was one of the, the cops that was... Cousin? You should say cousin. My cousin. <laughs> That's was correct one, pronunciation. Was one of the cops that was in that, uh, that whole... Because everyone in Boston really... It was like the city shut down or whatever. It was it was really crazy. My yeah. sister was Fenway during that bombing. Too. I didn't Whoa. see the I didn't see the movie, the Peter Berg movie. I haven't seen it yet either. What's but, it called? Um, Patriots Bad Day. Day. Patriots Day. Patriots I think it's Day. Called Patriots Day. I was about to make an inappropriate joke. So <laughs> Patriots Day. Hey, speaking of Patriots, pa- go to Patreon <laughs> now and uh, subscribe to the Doughboys Doubles for five dollars. We, we, we took we, the, the the city came together during that. Yeah, it was, a, it was a it was a great thing. I'm glad you sh- you stopped yourself before you landed that inappropriate joke and became the shame of city, shame of the city. <laughs> Even more uh, uh, infamous than Tsarnaev. <laughs> um, did you go out? For, did you audition for a Patriots Day? I did not. Why would? Like, what are your reps doing? Why aren't they sending you out for I, Patriots Day? My reps are your reps. <laughs> well, what are they the doing? I, don't, I, I, I never, I never get Boston auditions. Ever. You're such a great, bo- like you have a, such a great Boston look. You are from Boston, and you can do a Boston accent. Like you have, naturally have a little bit of a Boston accent, but you can really play it up too. I would have loved to be the guy who like found him or something. You know? Oh yeah, found him in the boat. And then got his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do well. The episode, the the Mitch Simpsons Boston episode was. We did not do any marathon bomber comedy in that either to feel good about. Right. And, um, but we you know speaking of it being kind of a provincial place, sort of the theme of the episode is. We're making this episode that only people in Boston will like it, <laughs> and that everyone else will be baffled by it, and you know maybe sort of get some of the broad jokes. So it's like the whole theme is like it's it's, it's a very provincial episode, I would say, and that like it was I only cared if the Boston Globe wrote an article about it. And my dad got a lot of phone calls, which which which, it, yeah. which happened, which correct? did happen. Oh yeah, I made that happen. The, you know, the only thing I remember about Watertown, Watertown, gr- growing up, is that uh, I went. My mom took me to a magic shop there when oh, I was younger, yeah. and I went Did to a, like like a smoke shop kind of magic shop. It was it was yeah. I feel like all all the thing that I found yeah. out when I'm older is that most magic shops are also smoke shops, which, <laughs> like, which I didn't realize. They had is, like kind of. Birthday cards that had boobs on them, and you'd be like, "Hey, all right." Oh yeah, I love yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. But there, th- this was like there was like some really cool, like really cool tricks there. You know, I learned a trick. You know what's funny? I think that I think Harry Anderson actually did this trick on TV, where you take a creamer mm-hmm. and you and you and then like you're like, I got something in my eye, and you like use like a, a fork and then you open the creamer, oh, and yeah, it comes out. So when I was younger, I try that on my kids tonight. That is, that is a, that is a Harry Anderson trick, and I'll, part of how I know that Eva Anderson, uh, Harry's daughter, who was a, a past Doughboys guest, mentioned like that's a specific thing she used to do. She's like done in restaurants, and maybe she maybe I've told the story before that yeah. because I used to be into magic. I did that trick with a knife <laughs> and went through and almost stabbed my eye out. Yeah. I was a I was a big I was a magic freak when I was not like Chris Angel but I was a magic freak. Yeah, you were a mind freak. I was a mind freak. Yes, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right. When 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 I when I when I was younger, I was a, I was a big magic fan, which I think comedy and magic overlap a little bit. I saw Doug Henning. Is that or Doug Henning? What was his mm-hmm. name? Doug I can't, Henning. Henning. I saw Doug Henning as a kid at a magic show, a live magic show, and they brought a little kid up on stage. And like there was a point where he's like, I need a kid volunteer. I raised my hand so high, I was like six, like just like as high as I possibly could, like standing on the seat. And he didn't call on me, and I was like, I did not enjoy any of the rest of the show. That, and that was it for magic for you? Yeah, th- at that point, I kind of walked away. You know, I went and saw a David Copperfield show, mm-hmm. and then on the way out, you could get a thing signed by him. And he was set up on this like table, and he was sitting on a chair, like on a table. And like we walked by, and he just like stared at me, and then that was when I got out of magic. <laughs> he just weirdly was staring at me, and I and I didn't like it. By the way, I just want to address. Yeah, I couldn't think of Patriots Day or whatever, or Patriot the the boss. It wasn't an inappropriate joke. I was right. I was gonna say Bad Day in Boston, but I, I didn't know what the name of the movie was. Yeah, I, you were you were poking fun. I wasn't at the tra- poking so you weren't going to say the movie should have been called Run 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 Boom Boom. No, yes, I wasn't gonna say anything like that. Of I course, you weren't thinking that. I was. I wasn't trying to make a bad. I don't tragic. It was a terrible tragedy, and it was an awful tragedy. Yeah, not good. And Armin should have played 
uh, the bomber in the movie because a lot of people say that he looks like him. Armin does look a lot like a Tsarnaev. Yeah, he does. Very, very handsome and yes. also a little baddie. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and there he, you he go, has, Nick. And he has no lower jaw. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, um, I just was listening to the Armin episode on the way over here to get it pumped. Right. To, you know, the Doughboy's mindset. And then did you turn your car around? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... He's, he, you can't beat Armin. Like... Well, the rest of us are all just guests. <laughs> Armin is his own thing. Yeah. Armin is... That's the best way to describe Armin. He's his own thing. He's his own thing. He's one of my best friends in Los Angeles. I love the guy. He's a great dude. No, I don't yeah. really... I don't know him. I'm only, only as a fan, but... He's a great dude. He is... He is, like, what you think he is. Like, there's, like, not, like, a... I don't think there's... There's a, at least as far as I've seen, I've never seen like the other side of Armin. Really, it's just Armin is just. Yeah, Mitch, Armin. have you ever seen the other side, like a human under all that? Um, no. Like, it's kind of just who he is. Here, I, I mentioned this. I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, but this is some of the context for the kind of man Armin is. The other night, with no other context, uh, Armin texts me this verbatim: "Eat up, Bartha." There's yes. nothing more beyond eat up Bartha, which now, I, I told him that's going to make no sense. Yes. To, to Nick and do, do, Selma, do you know what this? Do you know what he he was trying to do? I wonder if you would Justin Bartha. Yeah, it was a Justin From Bartha the, reference. The, 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 it was un, a Justin unfunniest hangover guy. It was a it was a Justin Barth, Bartha reference. Nice, but then it was also a reference to eat up Martha. Which is a Simpsons reference. Yeah. Mm. Which is beat up Martin. They're trying to make a note to, to beat up right. Martin in their Newton. I don't remember yeah, which right, bully is doing right. it. They're making fun of Apple Newton. Yeah. They're making fun of Apple Newton. Bad Newton's. voice recognition. Or, yeah. or handwriting recognition. Handwriting recognition. Yeah, handwriting re recognition. Armin wrote eat up Bartha for some... Why did it even I happen? don't know. I don't know what the what the reasoning was behind he's it. he's like, I'm going to text this to Weiger. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was surprised that he likes the, the non-extended Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I mean, like, from a, maybe from a pacing standpoint, but I think the, the extended Fellowship and Two Towers, for sure, just kind of, like, give it the, give, give the story enough yeah, meat. Yeah, I think the extendeds are, are pretty much... Maybe the one example where those in that trilogy where the extended is like the canon and the good version. Right. Someone, so we got to get to this chicken yeah, in a second. Do. But yes, I want to quickly just say before, before we get into it, uh, Selman, you're, you're, you're a big comic book fan. Uh, Less so in my dotage, but yes. Uh, but you, you wrote a review of, of Watchmen, I remember, that was a kind of a, a, a famous, a pass around review. Of well, I got in trouble because. I w there was like this uh, embargo. Oh no! And I didn't really know about or listen to the embargo. Yeah. <laughs> and then like Warner Brothers publicists called and yelled at me and threatened to. I'd never work as a journalist again. I was like, well, I don't. I'm not a journalist. <laughs> I already have a really awesome job. So. Was this? It was so. This was for the recent movie, not yeah. for the original Alan Moore comic. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the movie, the Zach. Zach Schneider. Zach Schneider. So my question to you is: Yes, you didn't you didn't love that movie, right? You you were so so on it. I I couldn't believe they made exactly the such a apish apish slavish. They made such a slavish version of the graphic novel to some extent. I kind right. of blew my mind that the thing mm. that when you were like thirteen thought was like only you and your friends knew about it was now a mainstream movie, mm -hmm. like almost you know shot for shot. With some rewriting, you know. They were recreating re panels. Recreated, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how do you think it holds up over time? And then also, how do you feel about... Not well. Not well. And how, how do you, But how do you feel about... Because I, I, I watch it, and I don't mind that movie. And my question to you is just about, like, modern day... Just modern day comic book movies. Are, 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 do you enjoy them? How do you feel about them? We, t we, we talked about this a little bit before the episode started, but what are your thoughts? Well, I'm a little old for this stuff i've seen twists and takes and subversions and mm -hmm. and undercuts and parodies and meta versions of superheroes more times than i can count at this right. point mm -hmm. and you know i was excited to see logan it was it was fun i like logan his claws one of his claws got stuck 
<laughs> that was awesome, but not when he needed it. And, uh, you know, I, it's a little weird that this is like, this is now 90% of our movie going experience. Right. Yes. But, you know, I still get excited for those Marvel movies. Can, there's, uh, there's so much, yeah, there's like so much of the movies that are being made. This is almost cliche to say, I guess, at this point, because it's been discussed so much, but the, it's so much of it, it's just pre existing properties. Like everything is an existing property. And even something like that, the, the, there was a recent instance, I won't say which movie because it'll spoil it, but there's a recent instance of a movie that was a like, oh, this is an original IP. And then the, the little twist is that, oh, it's not an original IP. This is part of an, an expanded universe. It's like everything is about building these expanded universes and tying into these these original IPs. Mm, what what about that? What movies are you I talking about? I know what about? he's talking about. Text me whatever. Okay, I'm going to text Mitch while we're doing the podcast what the movie was. Um, Wait, have you seen it? I don't know if you've seen it. I think you've uh, seen oh, it. Oh, yes, I know what it is. But, but still text me. I think I, think I know what it okay, is. Okay, great. Um, I, my, 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 so I think that Logan, I, I liked Logan, all right. And I know some people who really did not like Logan. But I think that that is the. Uh, the, the that I, I just got your text, even though you said the wrong thing. I sent the wrong time. title. I messed it up. <laughs> I sent the wrong title. Um, I, I I feel like Logan is moving in the area of if 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 cinema is to continue. Yeah, like it has to be more like oh, you're making a movie. You're like they're really making like there's a director's take, like a strong director's right. take on something. Not even that the the Logan director is really great. I don't really know much about him actually. But I did feel like it was a strong directorial take there. Though. Yeah, that one that I, one did feel like it. But but I I, but I feel like that's kind of like what, what we'll need. Right. I mean, it, it bums me out that like, and I'm sure that you feel this more like ten times over than I do because you 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 had this stuff longer. But like, it just feels like that sort of thing of like. They're taking the things that you like, and then they, then they're these now they're these new thing. You know what I mean? These things that every they that everyone eats up every summer, and and it, and it kind of is depressing in, in a, a lot of ways to me. Right. I mean, I feel like there's other stuff I worry about more these days. Yeah. But <laughs> not me. It is, yeah, not kind, me. it is kind of shocking that like the mainstreamification of like that you see a douchey jock guy with a super inside Green Lantern shirt sure. at the gym. Cooper just bought it because it was at Target, and he just thinks this is what guys like me wear now. Not, uh -huh. I love, I don't love Green Lantern so much either, but like, not that this guy has any affection for Green Lantern. Yeah. It's just been, it is insane. Yeah, leave the Green Lantern shirts to Sheldon. <laughs> to Sheldon. <laughs> the real nerd. The real nerd, like Sheldon. A real Sheldon. nerd like Sheldon. Um, Sheldon. And Sheldon Jr., the new, the, C the CBS prequel. Right. There's going to be a little Sheldon. Wow, after the success of Ace Ventura Jr., <laughs> of course, uh, uh, I feel like Sheldon Jr. Is a, is a sure thing. There was also a James Bond Jr. Right? cartoon. And mm -hmm. Big Bang Big Bang Babies is, 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 base, is, uh, is basically what Well, we is. did that in that... Well, I did a Simpsons episode a long time ago called... Uh, called something. <laughs> the one they know where a, melt, a meltdown type comic book store opened right and we did all these watchman jokes which at the time i'm like oh my god this is so inside is this the one that you had the watchman babies the watchman babies yeah, we had watch uh, babies funny. and we had alan moore and we had art spiegelman and dan klaus and i was you know i was very self-satisfied at the time that like we were able to take these guys from the fringes and put them in this you know middle middle everything show right and give them that exposure what an era! What is that? That was like that was around 2007. Also, what things were, really changed times. in the last ten years. So here's yeah. my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so we, we've kind of gotten that the nerd culture is just mainstream culture now. That that's just like you know the biggest movies are Star Wars and comic book movies, and I mean Star Wars was already the biggest movie, but it's like that's like a nerd culture thing that is just like you know it's just pop culture and and you know comic book movies superhero movies obviously um things like harry potter lord of the rings in recent years these the, it's all like kind of that's like just big mainstream entertainment so like what becomes game of thrones if we want to talk about something that would previously be relegated to like a very a niche high fantasy fan base so what is like the new nerd culture thing yes. they're going to graft onto other than like online nazism like what is like the jesus what like 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 other than the alt-right what are the the nerds going to be like this is our thing that's going to be a little thing carved out for them 
Your little farming game that you like so much. Stardew Valley? Yeah, yeah. Stardew Valley's fun. I, I guess there are there are some things in, in gaming culture that are still kind of like... Yeah, you're uh, kind of leading the way for nerds all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Star- like some sort of sort of uh, Johnny Appleseed from a nerd, for a nerd? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know. I, th- I don't think I'm quite... I don't quite identify as much as a nerd, and partly that's because of what nerd culture is now. There's so much like excitement behind it. Yeah, and what, I feel is, like- what is the... Yeah, that's, that's, that's hard. I, I don't know if, the, if that... That that niche culture it doesn't exist anymore. I don't know. It's I, like, are they going to get super hardcore into something like detectives, you know, or cowboys? <laughs> I seriously, I could like, I could see like, oh, we we're just like super into westerns now. That's what I we're guess nerdy about. Stuff like cosplay and stuff is maybe still like right considered nerdy or something. Well, but. the world, the world, the word nerd, yeah, it, it's it's sort of lost its meaning. And I mean, really, when there's always going to be people that. Are socially awkward and don't fit in, and you know, and and are picked on for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And but it's not because they like Star Wars anymore, right? They're called the Doughboys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in a Star Wars rant with you guys, but I was watching uh, the new one. Uh oh, Force Awakens or, the, or no, the Rogue One? Rogue One, okay. I mean, it's fine film, but like, I'm just like, so wait. How, how many billions of dollars have been generated just by just the main the, the essence of all these things is sneaking into space stations? <laughs> yeah, sure. like that's the core that unites this ten billion dollar cinematic universe of merchandise and, and whatnot. It's just like I'll put on the costume <laughs> and sneak of into the, a- of, the, of the bad guy and with, with the helmet half on and half off and tiptoe around, dink dink dink. And like maybe we'll run into our pals. <laughs> that's the, that's the main part of it. They've used that at least four times. I feel like in move in the Star Wars movies, so right? Crazy. The device yes. of disguising yourself as the bad guy. Yeah, four yeah, that yeah. I can think of specifically. You think they would maybe talk more about instances? It, like, Force Awakens. They sneak out, right? With uh, they dress up and sneak out of out of of the star base. Yeah, you're right. Sneaking around, <laughs> sneaking around the star or bases. Tiptoes. Yes, you're right. That's a good, that is a very, very good. I'm sure point. someone else has observed it. Sneaking, sneaking is a big part. Sneaking, <laughs> sneaking is a big part of the Star Wars. Huge part. Mythos. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. That people think about the space battles, but really, there's a lot of stealth missions. Yeah. I, but I do think the, the part of the weird DNA hookup of why everyone, all the everyone age, my age, forty five and whatever, older. Hooked into that in the, in the original generation of fans, the mm. first generation of which I guess I'm one, uh, was just the fun of sneaking in. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. The fun, and he, you know, and they're like, he has the helmet on, and they're kind of like not doing a great job with it's, it's, it's farce. You know, that's yes. People, okay, people think it's force because you know, Star Wars, it's <laughs> it's it's literally farce. It's door slamming farce. <laughs> That they're walking around and like <laughs> getting barely missed by other people and wearing costumes and misunderstandings and like saying the wrong thing into a communicator and like right oh, oh screw it zap and like it's farce <laughs> you're right you're that's right that's the, the that's the magic of this goofball universe a lot of the Han Solo that like some of his <laughs> he has like the ba- the radio banter yeah. with the you know what he's trying to impersonate wow, this is a really right. good There's point a lot that of I haven't really within it. heard too much about before. Hit us up with your favorite sneaky moment. <laughs> Hashtag sneaky Pete. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. Hey, you, you got to wear clothes, right? You're not some nudist walking around in the buff all the time like some freak. Try Mack Weldon. It's better than whatever you're wearing right now. Mack Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. Uh, I use their website to purchase a few items. Got the Sunday short, Sunday short. And I got myself the French Terrier's hoodie and the Everyday Socks. I said Sunday Short twice, but it's really just the Sunday Short. It's not the Sunday Short, Sunday Short, although that would be a fine name for it. Shorts are so comfortable, wearing them all the time in this unseasonable warmth due to global warming that we're having in in March right now. The French Terrier's hoodie is a great everyday hoodie, very comfortable, very stylish. Uh, My wife loves the color. And them everyday socks, ooh, those will treat you proper. Mack Weldon is the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants, and more that you will ever wear. They have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor on your stinky feet and stinky pits and your filthy asses you maniacs bathe bathe once in a while 
They want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you, no questions asked. Not only does Mack Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well, too. So go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code DOUGHBOYS. That's MacWeldon.com and 20% off using promo code DOUGHBOYS. Hey, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Both of us love to eat. Uh, hey, we made a podcast about it for crying out loud. That's Nick. how much we love to eat. How much? You know how much we love to eat? We made a freaking podcast about Can it. Can you man. believe these guys made a podcast they about a, eating? These guys like eating so much. They made a freaking podcast they love, about it. They love eating so much that they use their mouths, which they normally use for eating, to talk about it on a podcast it, about food. What the, where the hell are you going with your own impression? I, don't, I was wondering where you were going. I was, mine was kind of like an Italian guy. Oh, you were doing an Italian guy? Yeah. I thought you were doing some accent that from a territory that had not yet been discovered. <laughs> so I was trying to do some sort of alien cadence. Well, you know what? If you like to eat, HelloFresh is the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking fun, easy, and convenient. Each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes with step-by-step instructions designed to take around 30 minutes for everyone from novices to seasoned home cooks short on time. Mitch, I know you're not someone who's uh, very capable in the kitchen by your own admission. That's but, true. But this is absolutely something that you could do with step-by-step instructions. And let me tell you, uh, Nellie and I have done it. We got the chipotle rub chicken salad that we made. Mm-hmm. Very tasty. The roasted pork with balsamic fig sauce, green beans, and rosemary. Mary Potatoes was a favorite of mine. That sounds really yummy. That sounds really great. And hey, Nick, yeah. you know, I'm trying to eat well. I, I, I want to have good, fresh food and feel good about it when I eat it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so HelloFresh employs two full time registered dietitians on staff who review each recipe to ensure that it is nutritionally balanced. Yeah. That's th- something that I need. You know what I mean? A dietitian would tell you, don't eat what we eat on Doughboys. 100%. But yeah, the HelloFresh has a couple who are, who are overseeing their product. And, and they deliver food right to your doorstep in a special insulated box for free. It's real convenient. Uh, the caramelized pineapple burgers with Monterey Jack cheese and red cabbage slaw was another dish we had. Real good. Uh, so go ahead, and for $35 off of our first week of deliveries, visit HelloFresh.com and enter code DOUGHBOYS35 when you subscribe. That's $35 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com, code DOUGHBOYS35. Damn, that's a deal. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Matt Selman. Tournament of Champions, chicken fight. Let's talk food. Wingstop versus Wendy's. Selman, did you have any I think any that we bias? should have a, a sound effect. Like a, a when, like when you say the tournament name. Can, do you just want to do that? Sure, do it again. Okay, all right. Tournament of Champions, chicken fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wingstop versus Wendy's. Selman, what are your thoughts? Well... I drove over here. Well, did, first of all, did you also like the added sound effect? Oh yeah, I really like the added sound effect. Oh, great. I'm I'm an animation guy, so. Do you have like? All about, a, I'm all about ADR. If there's like a chicken roll on The Simpsons, can you get Mitch in at least to read for it? Definitely. Great. Like how uh, George Clooney was a dog, famously, or, or or no, wait. I think he was a turkey. A turkey. Yes. No, no he was oh, a dog. Was he a dog? I forget what he was. A dog or a turkey? Yeah. On on Proto Proto South Park. Yeah. Do we do we have any fried chicken restaurants on The Simpsons? Well, at the Universal Studios, you do. You have oh, yes, Cletus's. Of course. I mean, that's we should we should go there sometime and do a remote Doughboys at Cletus's Fried Chicken, which is really good. Okay, I'm digressing, but <laughs> the Cletus's Fried Chicken. Okay, in 2007, mm-hmm. Warburton, Matt Warburton, and some other writers and I got the honor, the best, funnest job of helping transform Back to the Future: The Ride into the Simpsons ride. Yes. Right. I actually worked. At the Simpsons at this mm-hmm. time. And part and I'm not gonna get into all the details of that. Part of it though is that they there was a the food court, the outdoor food court there was kind of rando universal properties like Flintstones ribs and kind of crazy stuff. And Doc Doc Do- Brown's Exactly. Fried Doc chicken. Brown's fried chicken. Because everyone knows that right. Doc Brown in the Back of the Future love fried chicken. It's all <laughs> over all three movies and the cartoons and the comic books. And no, Doc Brown, if, he doesn't care about food. He he probably forgets to eat. You yes. never see him eating. He drinks wine in Back to the Future 3. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you see him eat. He doesn't care. He's cared about science and inventing and, and you know, and like changing the future and stuff. Not eating. Anyway. Um, anyway, there was this Doc Brown's fried chicken. It was hugely popular. So that when we rebranded all that universal random back lot into Simpsons Land, Springfield mm-hmm. Land, and Krusty Land. Which is great. Which is great. It's awesome, actually. The They kept the Doc Brown's fried chicken, mm-hmm. and we renamed it. 
Cletus's chicken shack, which was the first idea we had, and we just went with that. And it's re- that's we're talking about th- another fried chicken. That is awesome fried chicken. And we the I've chicken- never actually had. It. I've only had the crusty burger, which is quite good. And the one's really good fried chicken. The breast is particularly good. Yeah. And, and I gotta say, Doc Brown's fried chicken. I think it's it's similar. It's the same it's recipe. The same no, one, they, yes. There was so much love for the recipe. They kept the recipe. And the rest. It was always. It's always been good. It's always been very, very good. I don't know what the pitch is other than Cletus's fried chicken. I think that's no, pretty good. There was, there, yeah, you really. It makes. To, what else are you gonna do? I what mean, else were we gonna do? I will. I did look it up on the Simpsons wiki. I searched for fried chicken. There was a crusty fried chicken in the episode when uh, the Simpsons visit Beijing so Selma oh, can right. adopt a kid. Right. Goo Goo by P- Guy Pan? Yes. Right. By, uh, uh, Dana, Gould. Dana Gould. And then there's the also... The got the show banned in China for like <laughs> six, six years. Wait, really? Yes. Did it have ghosts in it or something? No. It like, they skittage about ghosts and skeletons? No, it implied, you know, that not everything was perfect in the got Chinese it. government. And then there's also a uh, Kentucky Fried Panda. Yes, I wrote that episode. I remember that. Lisa the Tree Hugger, is yeah, it? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. So there's, but, a, yeah, there's a little bit of, of, of that in the Simpsons lore, but I think it, if it was just crusty fried chicken, it might be a little bit of a deep cut for the audience. It's, it's a great fried chicken. Maybe it has to get in the tournament next year. It's, it's great. Well, KFC is hugely popular in China. Right? Yeah, it's really big. Don't they? And like, I believe it's China where if you... They all go there on Christmas, and you have to make reservations months in advance to go to KFC. That's crazy. It's Japan, I'm sorry, world. But uh, I think it's China. But um, that's why we put that in that episode, because KFC is so huge there. Yeah, I think there's the, – because I, I think they're in worldwide terms. I think you know McDonald's and Subway are the biggest chains. But, Subway still? Yeah, Subway's wow. very big, but – uh, KFC has had a, a ton of success in Asia, and I read part of the reason they're so successful in China, aside from just, um, you know, like a, a, there's a lot of people who love chicken there, and, and the American fried chicken is like this big, fatty, juicy uh, uh, meat, but part of it is that the, they are, they're very good with the coupon system, and I guess coupons are very <laughs> big in China, and so like KFC like very savvily said like, okay, we're going to have a lot of coupons Mm. And so, and they they're just very very good at at, at marketing in that particular micro targeted way. Um, well, Simpsons Land is great. I think that's the least interesting thing I've ever said no, on the podcast. No, no, no. Was, I thought it was interesting. Selman and I both fell asleep for a second. <laughs> Sitting up, we were both asleep. Of all the boring shit of information, I, 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 just I didn't dispensed. even know where to go with it, so I just went I back to was, Simpsons I thought, was was great. I thought it was interesting. I mean, oh, God. when we did other a little tidbit here, if anyone cares, is that. So part of the fun of creating the Simpsons Springfield Outdoor Food Court at Universal and Uni- Hollywood and Florida was we got to name sort of funny names for the foods. Right. Yeah. Which is like, what a joy for someone who loves chain restaurants and goofy fast food to be able to be part of that. And But of course, you know, it's very corporate and a lot of our stuff got rejected. But the, and the one, one of the biggest fights we did win was to rename the chicken fingers at Kalidas' the chicken thumbs. Because like their argument was, you know, what if people think they're really thumbs? Right. <laughs> they were like, well, they don't think they're really fingers. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <sighs> that's great. I think that's a punch up. And you guys, like you guys, you thumbs. guys won that, I mean, right? It's, yeah, we won. I mean, it's, it's it's pretty clean. You know, a lot of the what was rejected. Oh man. Uh, well, we we wanted to do. A, I wanted to do a three foot long hot dog <laughs> that they would sell. But they, I guess it was the production impossibilities of, of casing tube that long. And yeah, that's a long a hot bun. dog. I just thought, <laughs> who wouldn't buy literally a three-foot-long hot dog? I mean, I know it's right. crazy, but like, it'd be such a goofy, maniac food. People well, I think the giant donuts, to get it. which are delicious, those giant donuts, I think, prove yeah, that people donuts, would, would yeah. buy it. I, I think the people line up for those giant donuts, which are really great. Well, we're, we're, we're definitely going to go there and review the Simpsons land, I think, at some point. Yeah, I think yeah, get, so. Get Warburton. That's the war. Well, that's what we should get Warburton for because he like is the king. Yes. He like was is the author of that ride, and he loves Universal. He worked on Mindy Show. He would just go up there and eat there at lunch every day and ride the ride. And we'll get him in for that for sure. That's the one. No, I will look forward to hearing. That. Warburton, I think, also was did so much on that ride. I remember at one point oh, the yeah. ride when you get when you're when Maggie puts you in her, your mouth didn't it used to smell like sour milk at one point maybe i think it smelled like or now it's baby powder it's baby powder but it was supposed it and was water they spray i wanted it to be 
to squirt you with mineral oil, so it was like <laughs> more like saliva. Right. <laughs> I didn't really think that was, that was going to fly. Uh, I the 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 I think I think maybe even when it opened, it was like sour, like kind of like a milky smell. Oh, interesting. And, and then, you guys, the writing process, were you like, we want to kind of smell like the assistant who gets us lunch? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I remember, I remember eating at Doc Brown's fried chicken before they switched it and then riding the ride, but like an early, like not finished, incomplete, like wires everywhere version that was in no way calibrated. And oh, wow. Coming so close to throwing up <laughs> in, a, oh, in, in five seconds, like instantly, like headed between these eyes closed. Because like if those rides aren't right, they, they don't take the Same. edges off. Yeah. You, you will vomit. Oh, yeah. Man. Um, let's talk about yeah, let's, let's talk go. chicken. All right. Wingstop, Wendy's. Uh, Doc Brown's fried chicken and Cletus's chicken shack aside, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on these specific chains? Did you have any biases going in, Selman? Well, I know there's a lot of love for Wendy's in the world. Right. I don't have a huge Wendy's personal backstory, uh-huh. but no, this is not negative about Wendy's. It, I feel like you know I've eaten a ton of KFC and a ton of McDonald's and stuff in my life, but I never ate as much Wendy's growing up. And Wingstop is a new chain. Mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. I have eaten that, but it's it's new. But um, so I just you know I'm a little feel like I, I was able to come in objective on both of them without a lot of emotional bias. You are a, you hear. are a big wing fan. I am a big wing fan. Which I love scares me as a big Wendy's fan. So mm-hmm. I'm also a huge Wendy's fan, and I'm a Wings fan. I, I like both of these chains. I definitely have a have a Wendy's bias, just as someone who has some. It was eating a lot of great meals from there. Uh, but I will also say that I didn't eat a lot of Wendy's growing up. Wendy's was a thing I came around to in adulthood. Wendy's was one of those places that my parents, for whatever reason, didn't like going to Wendy's. It might have just been that it was on the other side of town and they didn't want to drive there. But I never went there as a kid with my parents. I only went there on occasion with friends. And then as an adult, I sort of uh, build up a brand loyalty to it. But Mitch, you were always a a Wendy's loyalist. I was a Wendy's kid. I, I've I've always been a Wendy's loyalist. Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have been. I should have been eating carrots and vegetables. But I, I went to Wendy's quite a bit when I was younger. Look, the whole point of this podcast is let's just Rome is burning. So who cares? <laughs> right. I mean, um, that is. A, I feel like that is a feeling that almost everyone has lately is that yeah. the world is going to end. I We're, think if you approach this this uh, podcast with kind of like a nihilist standpoint of like nothing matters and we're all headed towards a fiery death, then there is like something of just like, oh, we can spend so much time talking about something so trivial or or listening to, to well, idiots can, and a guest talk about well, something so trivial. Well, what would be the point of wasting our remaining years worrying over the unchangeable nightmares that are now seem to be intrinsic into present and future so might right. as well have fun now i mean it's it's uh that's as a- the song winner takes it all no no that's not that song <laughs> as the song says the song from karate kid you're the best around you're the best around <laughs> you know, it says, it's, history repeats itself try and you'll succeed mm-hmm. that's the lyric in that song right yes. which in tomorrow night simpsons which you will not hear because it will have already aired when this airs we homer sings that song in perhaps a 95th comedy appropriation of it. (laughs) But it was was pretty funny, Dan singing that song. Uh, Sorry, chicken. Wingstop. Wingstop. I got, so here, I'm going to get my rundown of what I got at Wingstop, and then you guys can talk about what you got, and then I think there's going to be a little bit of overlap. In fact, I'm fairly certain there's a little bit of overlap. Oh, yes. But I got the mango habanero, boneless, Mm -hmm. garlic parmesan, bone-in, Brazilian citrus pe- pepper, which is a new flavor they have, maybe a limited run, bone oh. in. I got a little blue cheese dipping sauce, and I got some baked beans and an iced tea uh, on the side, but, you know, sides stay on the sidelines. Drinks are not in the sink, in the stink, or in the Gatorade jug, on the sidelines. Yes. Um, drinks, drinks are in Blake Griffin's personal cooler that only Ike was allowed to drink from. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was, your, what was your guys' rundown of sauces and seasonings? Well, Selma got mad because we tried to get that Brazilian one, and we could really not. Mad. They didn't have it? It wasn't a. It, I got it from DoorDash, uh-huh. and uh, and I couldn't. I could not order it. Oh, so that sucks. Instead, we went with the Hawaiian flavored wings. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got original hot. Mm-hmm. We got Cajun. Mm-hmm. We got Louisiana rub. Mm-hmm. That's three. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can do all of this from memory. Hawaiian is four, right? Yeah. You also got a mango habanero. Mango habanero is five, 
And then lemon pepper is six. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got them. Nice. That's all six. Very well nice. done. We got ranch and blue cheese dressings. Mm-hmm. No sides. Mm-hmm. I got myself a Diet Coke. Uh, yes, I got myself a Diet Coke because I'm sick and hungover from St. Patrick's Day. So uh, I needed a drink and that, that's it. We, and then Selman. I watched British Baking Challenge and went to bed last night. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a better choice and a, probably a better night. How is that? Is that the one everyone's crazy about, British Baking Challenge, or is that a, an offshoot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's no, just a very good natured, gentle, non histrionic cooking competition show. I haven't watched it. I got to check it it's out. It's very relaxing. Should we, should, we, should we talk about that or should we say what we got from Wendy's? Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's talk to it. Well, yeah, let's put, it, let's put it all out there and then we can talk right. about it. Wendy's, okay, so. <laughs> uh, Commissioner of the Tournament of Champions, Evan Susser, because of Mitchgate, which is the scandal involving a purported bias. Now called the, Inflategate. Now, now called Inflategate via Salbid. <laughs> uh, purported bias because the cup they are competing for is the Dave Thomas Cup. That is mm-hmm. the trophy for the tournament. And that that would somehow, the fact that that exists is indicates some sort of corruption. I guess that's the implication mm-hmm. on our part. Um, so as a result, Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich has been banned from this week's competition. The most up, fucked up thing that Susser has ever done. It's a pretty cruel penalty uh, because I got the homestyle chicken sandwich instead, which is basically the exact same stan- sandwich, but without the spicy uh, patty or, or breaded chicken breast, whatever you want to call it. And I also got a large chili, but though again, sides down the sidelines. Um, and what was your guys' Wendy order? Wendy's order? Um, I got the exact same sandwich. And I, I thought about ordering every chicken thing that yeah, I'm kind of a completist. Right. Like we went to B dubs, I wanted to eat everything on the menu, which was gonna would have been hard. We did eat we about, came close. We ate about twenty different kinds of wings. Yeah. Yes. And then we had about six kinds of wing stop wings. So I just but what I did, I got the one sandwich, but then I'm like grilled chicken is re- pointless. This is a fried chicken competition. Right. And the wraps wraps stay on the something. And uh <laughs> wraps are in the and Wraps are a piece of crab. Wraps are wraps are cra- or wraps are stay on the legs. As your trainer would tell you, they they're yeah, not even the that healthy. Wrap is you think you're eating healthy with a wrap, but you're no, really not. It's it's just still a big carb right. thing. Um, that tortilla is not much better than no, the giant floor, flour, the dense flour. It's not. It's, like, it's a different kind of bun. Yeah, you know, it's actually really super high carb is uh, pita bread. Anyway, let's get oh, this. Oh wow, that's sad to hear. I know. Uh, that's so very sad. Um. We did get the nuggets, though. We got the. We I don't got, think I'd ever had Wendy's nuggets in my life. We, the I, I have had them, and I like Wendy's nuggets. Yeah, I like their Someone nuts. got some. Uh, I was basically eating it during our dope recording of our Doughboys double. I, I didn't even dip any of them in sauce, but I kind of liked eating them plain because I got all four sauces. They're, I, they're very. Which they did not charge me extra for. So Wendy's nuggets are good. Wendy's nuggets are, are they're different. Obviously, they're not as good as McDonald's nuggets. I don't think. But they're they're very good. They're different than I feel like a lot of other nuggets. They they feel kind of like more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whole, they feel wholesome. Like they feel like they're like more like there's a little bit more. Like maybe the chickens in those horrible agribusiness concentration camps briefly saw the sky. Yes, <laughs> there's some, there's there's something like that. There, there's a feeling right. like that like they feel like home, more homemade or you know there's there it, it feels like a little touch of mom's cooking or something like that to, but that's to the, the wendy's nuggets. magic in general right yes, like yes, everything's just it's all it's all quick service fast food but it's all like just feels like it has a touch the more dave care. thomas touch yeah. yes uh, um be easy it's fine we don't want any more penalties here <laughs> <laughs> roger goodell <laughs> susser <laughs> We'll have, to, um, we'll have to trade up next season with him <laughs> by like, like, yeah, he is as bad as Roger Goodell, I guess. <laughs> well, thematically, that's good for the show. Um, uh, I got. Wait, the how come we have been commenting on the fact that he always says Popeyes? <laughs> Oh yes, yeah. Mitch does say Popeyes. Pop- well, that's like a Pop- that's like an affectation of yours yes. that you say that you Pop- say Pop- soft O's as puz. Pop- Pop- Lovable Pop- Mitch in his Pop- mispronunciations. Pop- 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 Popeye hot dog popcorn. <laughs> mom, yeah. My mom. My mom. Is that a Boston thing or is that just a you I think thing? It is. It might be. I think. I think it's maybe a New England thing. Okay. Yeah, Popeye. maybe like the weirdo Popeye inbredy New England people say. I think it's he one actually had a dog named Pop. He might have had a. I don't know. Papa have a dog? Papa. Pup, you know, Papa Popeye? Like, I had a Papa, a Nana, and a Papa. Did Popeye have a dog Papa. named Papa? Uh, wait, did Popeye have a dog named Popeye? Is that what you're asking? That's what I'm asking. That sounds like he, he would. He probably I'm did. I'm just going to say yes. That's the like, Cletus, Cletus Chicken Shack level of originality that went into naming P- Popeye's characters. Right. Popeye's, the Reddy's just wanted to go home. Like, the Popeye's Popeye. universe, I could, I could care less about the... 
Except I like uh, the guy who eats the hamburgers. Wimpy. 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 Oh, yeah. Wimpy's great. Wimpy's a good character. Well, like, the yeah, most realistic cartoon character that ever was. They have not was. incorporated yeah. Wimpy at all into the marketing of Popeye's Chicken, that's for sure. Well, yeah. they don't own... The Popeye's Chicken does not own the rights to the Popeye's character at all. It, it was... They just sort of took the name and then just claimed it was... But at some point, there was Popeye on Popeye's Chicken. Yeah, they had a Popeye... They had Popeye for, there for a little bit, but they didn't really incorporate a hamburger fan Wimpy at all. Yeah, they well, should have. He was sort of like a... Skinflint character. Yeah. Yes. He's always looking to, I would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. And yeah. Another one of his catchphrases was, why don't you come over for a duck dinner? You bring the ducks. <laughs> it's a deep, deep cartoon cut. Is that true? Is yes. that really what he used to say? Oh, and these sure, these like, quotes that are still used today. He was right. so great. He was... <laughs> He had like a Homer Simpson type appetite, that wimpy. He, all he cared about was eating hamburgers. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he wanted to eat a lot and then he didn't want to pay. Did you. not want to pay. I'm sure he was like a commentary probably on some old like politician. Like he probably was like a, an Adlai Stevenson analog or, or something Ju- or like Jewish that. Jewish people. Or- oh, yeah. That, that, that's probably actually <laughs> what it was. It was some sort of commentary on some uh, maligned. Wimpy's a Jewish man? And I don't minority. think so. There oh, might have okay. been another Jewish stereotype in Popeye who was also um, not so great. But you know what? We're not okay. talking about no, sorry. Popeyes, sorry. which which Susser pushed into the next round of the competition. Right. No. Or I guess you did. I well, did. We, it's all our fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I got the Asiago Ranch Chicken Club, I got the home style chicken because I couldn't get spicy, uh, and I had some of those nuggets as well. Um, should we talk about? Should we talk about the me- what we thought of the meals? Yeah, let's, let's do go it. down. Let's go down the uh, look. We'll we'll start. We'll go down the the, the line with wing stop. I'll talk through mine, and where you guys over overlap, you can feel free to chime in. Okay. Mango habanero, legitimately spicy. That's a plus for me. A, a little sweet, not too sweet. I I, I think they're like it's like ni- that nice sort of. I know it's not going for an Asian flavor, but it kind of ha- it ended up kind of having like kind of an Asian Polynesian. Uh, sort of zing to it, mm-hmm. but with a decent amount of heat, and it's the second hottest next to the Atomic, and I've heard the at- Atomic, which I've never had, because um, I'm a little bit of a heat seeker, but I don't go crazy. I have heard the Atomic can be really, really a, a blazing on the tongue, so I opted not to have it, but the mango habanero is a good, like, like high spice level for me, and I really enjoyed that, and, and I think the boneless wings have a good texture to them. Um, they're nice and crisp, uh, and they're they're not soggy at all, which can sometimes happen with those uh, boneless, those heavily sauced boneless wings. What did you guys think of that mango habanero? I thought it was good. Uh, you know, I kind of put the mango habanero and the Hawaiian into kind of the same category. Sure, they're, they're, you're right. I mean, the Hawaiian is even more Polynesian tasting than than the mango habanero, but. Uh, I I don't love those kind of like sweet wings as much as I love right. other other types of wings. Uh, mango habanero. I didn't have too much problem with the heat. Did you, Selman? I thought the heat was just all right. No. Yeah, and I I, th- I was kind of nervous about eating them. Yeah. I, th- I thought I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be tough. It's yeah. not super spicy, but it is like you can you can feel it. Well, the, the mango habanero at because there's a mango habanero at Buffalo Wild Wings, right? And it, they are super spicy. That one's quite a bit more quite a bit spicy. I was impressed they were able to even say mango habanero. Yeah. At a at a rival. Yeah, that like I guess, they wouldn't have. That wasn't one of their signature flavors, like Magno Mango Habs. It, right, neither it of them be. trademarked it. Yeah, yeah. I, I Maybe guess. you can't t- trademark a spice fruit combo like that. Mm. But right, I mean, I, I guess I brought my own biases to it, which is I don't, I don't like boneless wings, so I uh-huh. do not order any, and I don't love sweet, sticky wings like yes. teriyaki's and those. So, right. but that's not the wings' fault for me not liking that. That's true. I agree with that. I thought overall the wings. We're good, but Nick, you you have more flavors. I get the go garlic, over? the garlic parmesan. I get that as a bone in. Uh, garlic parmesan. I thought like it, it's it's well good, like very generously coated with that parmesan. Um, really flavorful, and I I really liked like the. I really generally like ones that have a little bit of spice and a little bit of heat to them. Mm. But as far as the non spicy wing variants, I think that garlic parmesan is up there with the lemon pepper wing, which is my favorite from Wingstop, but which I self-disqualified. I decided not to get in solidarity with the Wendy's band. Whoa, that's so integrity. I decided not to get my favorite from Wingstop since I was not getting my wow. favorite from Wendy's. Um, but the garlic parmesan is, is really good if you're just looking for a little bit of a change of pace. And also, too, if you're having something a little spicy, that uh, the dairy on that wing can help cool down um, at the end of your meal. Um, and then the Brazilian citrus pepper, which is like a medium spicy level, and it's one of their new ones, Man, I thought this was a home run. 
Uh, Nelly and I oh, really enjoyed it. Nelly, in fact, says it's her favorite Wingstop wing, period. She wow. likes it better than, than any other Wingstop wing she's had. And I, I mean, like, it's, it's hard to argue with that. I, I don't know if I'd go 100% with her on that one, but it's hard to argue against it because it's, it's very, very flavorful. Uh, blue cheese dipping sauce. I just wish they gave you an extra dipping sauce cup of Wingstop. I feel like they're a little stingy with that. Yeah, but um, but you know, overall, a, a very successful haul as far as I'm concerned. Uh, your guys' wings. We so we did the the lemon pepper. Nick, I, I'm gonna disagree with you. Uh, the uh, lemon and ch- the lemon is just too lemony tasting, mm. and it and it kind of fake tastes almost like a fake lemon. Well, you're disagreeing with me and Rick Ross. Who I'm, I know. I'm sorry, Rick. I, I I I uh not the boss of my fla- uh, taste buds. <laughs> um, so I I I I didn't I don't love the lemon pepper. Wings. I don't like lemon and chicken. When I was young, I was sick, and my mom made lemon chicken, and I got and I threw up. Oh boy! And I've never liked the combo of lemon and chicken. I love lime. Don't like lemon. Lemon, lemon and chicken. They don't go together great with me. I thought it was just all right. I love the Cajun. Uh, I'm sorry. I love the Louisiana rub is maybe my favorite of all the mm-hmm. Wingstop flavors. And then I also like the Cajun. And the original hot is is good. It's great. I think I maybe like the Cajun more than the original hot. Yeah. And then as, does, does that cover cover it all? I, I feel like the original hot is a little underwhelming. Like it's just kind of like a very generic and like I feel like their original hot should be should stand out a little bit. It should have a little bit of uniqueness to it. Instead, it's just sort of like, this feels like any Frank's Red Hot that you would get at any pizza place that also serves wings. Yes. I will say one thing. This is a minor, minor bullet point, but they have both Cajun and Louisiana rub. That's confusing. Like, rename we one order, of them. We ordered both, right? We ordered both. Rename one of them. I don't know which was which. That's really. exactly. People get disoriented. Like, I don't know which was which. I've had them both. Well, the rub is the British, rub. British and the, and people the, get disorientated. The, <laughs> <laughs> the Cajun were, were, were the red wings with the, the, the black dots on it. Okay, the dots. Yeah, the dot ones, which I liked. They were uh, one of my favorites I don't of the sauces. Bring back old, old memories, but remember what a great job. B Dubs did labeling the wings when we ate they them. They do do a good job yeah. of labeling. Wingstop yeah, does not labels, do a good, as good of a job as labeling. That's they, for sure. There's no. There's honestly no labeling. You're left to, to figure it out. Sell out for yourself. You're you're like a. I'm disorientated. I don't know which of these <laughs> wings are on this aluminium foil. <laughs> Was that your British impression? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's pretty good. Whatever. He um, wasn't trying too hard. That's he wasn't good. trying too hard. That's true. <laughs> can I uh, can I be on the show if you guys do a, uh, a yes. next time you do a, a UK Simpsons? Definitely. All right, great. Groggy. Um, <laughs> people are always pitching like podcast festival episodes, but they keep not happening. Ooh, but it could happen. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's the compli- Doughboys. It's complicated. I, I don't want Nick to be. I've been on The Simpsons. Yeah. I don't want Nick to ever be on it. If that's possible, someone will you make that happen? I do a bad job. No, no, you'd be good. Um, I think the. <laughs> The thing about podcasts is I often wonder how relevant they actually are because I think like people who do them and around them and listen to them like are like, oh, podcasts are like a part of your life. But I think there are a lot of people who are like, what's a podcast? And I feel like it's almost like it's just it's almost people know what the radio is. But I feel like what percentage of the country think has no idea what a podcast is? 70 percent? I think they'll know eventually as sort of weirdo narrow casting takes over the world that like. Yeah, sure. People aren't going to listen to the radio anymore. They're just going to listen to like whatever Bill O'Reilly's daily rant that just once it once they once it becomes so easy and not right. It probably has already happened. I feel like people in entertainment, unless they're asking Rupert Murdoch himself, know what a po- and even he knows what a podcast is. I'm sure. No, but I'm not talking about people in entertainment. I'm talking about like people in general. Yeah, like, I'm talking like the, the general public. I feel like the, I I think we like it's like the kind of thing of like the percentage of people that are active Twitter users is like two to 5% of the population. It's very small, but if you're on Twitter, it feels like, Oh, this is the whole world. This is representative of what people's opinions Mm. are. You know, I I don't know. I I feel like podcasting is like similarly irrelevant to a lot of people. Hmm. Makes us feel like what we're doing is pretty. 1800 people (laughs) are paying $5 a month. There you go. I'll take it. The same. Um, So Selman, what, what were your thoughts on the Wingstop wings? Well, they were they're professional wings, right? I love like, all the dry rubs are my favorite. Wet, wet, less less good, but they were they had nice crisp to them. You know, professionally uh, fried. There wasn't a lot of extra fat or goo, yeah. or that dreaded kind of coating that kind of peels off. That's true. So, you know, overall, I thought they were they were very solid takeout wings. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very meaty wings. There, I feel they were meaty, but sometimes they're so meaty that like. They become like 
organy. Yes. Sure. So a, a small wing is often better, I think. I mean, I'm sure they were they're frozen. I'm sure they're. I love wings out for the crisp. I think that they have a good crisp. I mean, they, I mean deliver, yes. delivery is never quite as crisp as in store. Yes, that's, that's true. How who, how would you fix that? Yeah. But it's also too like it's such a takeout oriented place that I think that's fair to include in your evaluation mm-hmm. because yeah. if you you go to a wing stop, do they all have, usually all the ones I've been to have at least a few tables inside? But it's kind of like eating at a Domino's. Like mm-hmm. people get that oh, no. get wing stop to go. You know what I mean? That's so fun. Eating at a Domino's that is sad. I've yeah, done that is. before. Um, oh, that's, that's of rough. course you have. Well, guys, yeah, I ordered a pizza for there and ate it ate it myself. When was this? Was this within the last two years? No, as this well? this was this was like fifteen years ago. Okay. Well, here's the here's a little idea for the podcast. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I went to B Dubs last time. I bought a little bit of stock. Right. Now I could buy a Wingstop <laughs> here. There's an affordable investment, great returns. Buy like an a, actual like Wingstop. Yeah, I, it says here. You know, I can I can break it down for you if you want. But cut to the chase. There, it seems to range between three hundred and nine hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars, not including real estate lease costs. Ooh, I'm not gonna click on get get started. I'll just click on get started. <laughs> That's a, I mean, that's a pretty substantial up. No, no, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Some I feel of like money. our podcast may lead to you ruining your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think also, too, it may just be a conflict of interest, you owning Buffalo Wild Wings stock and owning a Wingstop franchise. That's a good point. Like do, they, you, do you well, have some good questions here? Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you prefer we contact you? Available cash? Da, da, da. Have you ever owned a business? No. <laughs> uh, first area of interest, wings. That would be right. Second area of interest, could you name it like Selman's Wingstop? Uh, do they I don't al- think so. No, do you plan no, to be the day-to-day operator? Well, of course. Uh, <laughs> do you have multi-unit restaurant management or development experience? How did you find us? Do you plan to have a partner? All right, well, we'll submit this later. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it could be good. Um, it's 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 the, the wings are quality. Yeah. Look, I'm nervous because. I, I, let me talk about the Wendy's. Let's I had that, I had that Asiago Chicken Ranch Club. I think I would open a Wingstop before I open a Wendy's. Wow. Just because it was it's a, a fresher thing, you know. I think I agree with you. I, even though I like Wendy's more as a restaurant, I think managing a Wingstop would be more interesting because it's kind of like the – I like the idea of it, the, the specificity. I like how targeted it is. I'd probably try to be like the cool manager and no one would respect me and like steal a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mitch, your Wendy's. The well, Asiago no, chicken. I know you stole a little bit this time, Mitch, but just come on, man. <laughs> Wait, Mitch is <laughs> working there? Why would you hire yeah, him? Yeah, he's working there. <laughs> I'd also be stealing wings. <laughs> I also, well, I know he's good at food service. I'm sorry. No, no, I did it. <laughs> I was great. I was great at delivering food. Was good. The right. Selman stack, as it's known. That stack is an abomination. That stack. Selman was a foodie. He, he would get a lot of different things to try. And one time, his stack hit the cabinets of on from the from the counter. It hit the ca- the cabinets above the counter. Just a just as a lunch order, a mm-hmm. single lunch order. I've eaten so That's much. Right. I've eaten so much food now that takeout food over the years that I trying a new diet called the, the Cobb Salad Diet. <laughs> it's like just get a Cobb Salad for every meal. And don't put the creamy dressing on it. Like, put a light dressing on it. And like, well, it's not so bad for you. Like, chicken. Right. Yeah, avocado, that's not bad. Yeah. Or a little bit of bacon, a little bit of cheese. But then, you're in, in, you know, some lettuce. That's you're pretty good. Right. And then you put, like, a light dressing on it. Just Things have changed since I've been there, definitely. Uh, but Okay, back to Wendy's. So, the Asiago Chicken Ranch Club home style is good. Mm-hmm. It's not as good as the spicy chicken sandwich. Right. But they do a good job with it. The chicken patty at Wendy's is good. It's a good, they do a good. It, 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 it's just it's just a well done chicken patty. Mm-hmm. It, like you know, we were t- the, we were raving about the Chick Fil A patty on the last episode. Yeah, I I I, I, love I, episode. I, I love that, and you know, I love the taste of the spicy chicken patty. I can't talk about it or whatever this bullshit is. But I that 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 Asiago Ranch chicken. Patty, it's it's great. It's it's a it's a good good sandwich. It's yeah. a really really good sandwich. Dustin, you should bleep out just the word spicy <laughs> when anyone ever says spicy chicken, and then just probably as if as if <laughs> chicken sandwich. So the audience won't get think they're a bias, continued bias. <laughs> Uh, um, it's it's bullshit that we can't talk about that sandwich. Yeah. Well, maybe we can't talk about it. We just couldn't have. We just shouldn't have gotten. We it. didn't eat it. No, no, one, no one ate it. No one ate it. No one ate it. Yeah. No one ate it. I, I had the nuggets. I thought about eating it just for context, but not talking about it. But I didn't want to die. Nellie said I should just get it. She thought I should just openly defy 
susser and just get the spicy I like sandwich. that. You yeah, should. I like that attitude. We can, all go, we can all go to Wendy's right now and do it and come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have, we never have to listen to susser. Right. I don't know why we do. But anyways, um, I really enjoyed it. I think yeah. the sandwich is really good. I think that the home style chicken sandwich there is good. And I think the nuggets are good. I think their strongest is the sandwich that can't be named. Mm. But I think all the other ones are, are quality contenders. The issue here for me is that the wing stop wings are very good. So, right. And, and, and it's going. It's basically going against its B team right now, Wendy's B team. So right, it, I, I would say about the home style chicken sandwich, which is what I got, is that it's crazy what a difference that patty makes. Like just because the only the only tangible difference between the home style chicken sandwich and the spicy chicken sandwich is mm-hmm. the spicy patty versus the regularly seasoned patty. Right, it's the same crispy chicken, but the just spicy one of patty them. seems a little bit thinner. Yeah, it is a little thinner. Yeah, the, the the home style seems a little bit like thicker, juicier, which I don't know if is a good thing or not. Actually, well, I I do feel like I kind of like I I like the texture of the spicy one even more, even though it is a little thinner. You yes, know, like me I almost too. feel like it just like it it just comes together as a sandwich a little better proportionally. It's like the right amount of chicken for that amount of bun, lettuce, tomato, and mayo. It really works. Yes, and the the home style chicken sandwich is just a little. I would never say dry. It didn't quite. It doesn't quite get dry, but it's just almost like a little. It overwhelms the composition of the other elements a little bit um and yeah there's just not as much flavor to it mm-hmm. like the 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 mayo i feel like is like a nice counterpoint to the zing on the spicy but with the homestyle chicken one it just kind of feels kind of it just kind of feels kind of just like kind of creamy and gooey it, it doesn't doesn't have the same sort of uh, a flavor counterpoint that it does on the other one i feel like i have to agree go for it with nick about the what was it called? The classic chicken sandwich? Or the homestyle chicken sandwich. Homestyle yeah. chicken. I mean, it, to me, and I ate it almost immediately after receiving it, was it was it was pretty flabby, kind of soggy. The mayo gave it, I hate to say this, Wendy's, almost a chicken salad mouth experience. Yeah. No, I like chicken salad, but I'm not, when I'm like, when I, when I see the word crispy. Mitch just put his head in his hands. You know. When I see the word crispy on a menu and I see how like good it looks in the picture and it just was kind of mm-hmm. it was just kind of blah. And this is we're, we're judging fried chicken here. Saucer, I'm going to Granted kill it you. had <laughs> it had bread. I mean, it definitely was breading, but it was it really was yours crispy cuz you and I ate like the exact same time. It, Here's the deal. It wasn't crispy. Yeah. My Asiago Ranch you had Chicken bacon, Club. So you had more flavor and ranch dressing. My that sandwich, I enjoyed that as a whole. More than I did the wings, okay? Yeah, Look, that's I'm fair. voting fair. for Wendy's. That's fair. Uh, what, who, who you two are voting for, we'll find out in a minute. Oh, we'll right. find out. But I, I, my vote isn't for Wendy's. This is really frustrating for me because I get criticisms of this other sandwich. Yeah. I, I think that this sandwich is more likely to have an upper, can, can be up or down. You know what I mean? The home style Every time I've gotten an Asiago sandwich, chicken sandwich from there, it mm-hmm. can, the quality of it can go, can go back and forth. Yeah, the spicy chicken sandwich almost always is great. The Asiago with the chi- the spicy chicken patty though is great, like yes. you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Let me ask you this because I, I'll say how I feel, and then I want I want your thoughts. Uh huh. I feel like the spicy chicken sandwich when I go to Wendy's, I crave over the burger. Enough where I'm like, oh, that's what I want sometimes. And I feel like the homestyle chicken sandwich, that homestyle mm. patty, to me, I, if I went to Wendy's and that was the only option, the spicy chicken they just took off the menu, I feel like I would almost always get a burger. I feel like I would be like, just like the, I, I don't see a reason to choose this over the burger. How do you feel on that? I maybe would agree with you, except occasionally I would get the Asiago Ranch. Yeah. It's so. it's just I, I mean like I'm rooting for Wendy's I love Wendy's I, I Wendy's is the platinum the nuggets club. are great five forks the they do have good nuggets I I had it I had one of Selman's nuggets it was it was quite good I've had it before Asiago is such a great like ten years ago trendy food flavor ingredient <laughs> like what is it is it kind of is it a kind of cheese it's like yeah, a parmesan ish cheese yeah it's like a kind of sharp cheese yeah it's like a hard cheese they yeah. had you know what they had some bacon ranch fries for a while. And they, they just recently took them off the menu. They're a limited promotional thing, but they had Asiago on them. Asiago. And when I ordered, when you'd order them, uh, they'd be like, uh, uh, oh, just so you know, like, you know, some people don't like these because people complain because it's not like a, like a nacho cheese or a cheddar cheese on it. It's like a hard cheese. But those bacon ranch fries are really, really good. God damn it, Weiger. Let's, I can't deal with this anymore. <laughs> you have a death grip on your Wingstop cup. 
Um, there's I, Wingstop, which is annoying, by the way. Let's yeah. point it out that says get at it. And it right. talks about Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram and all that shit. And also the bag that I brought the Wingstop wings in had a Lakers logo on it, <laughs> which is more points deducted for Wingstop. <laughs> That's true. Um, yes. Yeah, they're the official la- wings of the Lakers. Uh, they the get some signage in wings of the Lakers. Yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah. Well, um, all right. Let's get to our verdict. God. We're going to count down from three to one. The wing we choose. Wing. I the wing. Said, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the, That's the, a bias. The, okay. The chicken we choose. The Freudian slip. The chicken we choose is advancing to the finals. We're deciding which one we would give to the devil to turn him into an angel and have him ascend to heaven. The bite of it would be so divine that he would see the goodness of humanity and revert to his good self. Mm -hmm. Uh, The loser is still alive, still has a chance to get back into this thing. It's going to the loser's bracket and fat chance kitchen on the Doughboys double, so it can uh, possibly re-enter the main competition. His tail would go back into his body. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you're back to the devil now. Yes. First first it would unfork. Mm -hmm. It would unfork. Uh, his, 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 the, the big pitchfork he's holding would turn into what a big staff, a yeah. big, a big walking stick, right? Like a Gandalf staff, a Gandalf staff. His hair would go from black to blonde. Mm-hmm. His eyes would become blue. Wait, this is well, starting to sound racialized. <laughs> right, his, his thick curly hair would become blonde. His, his, thick curly his hair. skin would get a lot lighter. <laughs> His this, Jew horns <laughs> would, shr- would, sh- would shrink into his skull. <laughs> All and, right, and he would, and he, and he, yeah, he would see the goodness of the way. So, really, think about this. Really, think about what you want to choose here. I'm thinking about it, and I mean, I'm honestly, is, I haven't, not, dis- I haven't even decided yet. Wingstop versus Wendy's. This is Wingstop wings versus Wendy's fried chicken options. Yes, yes, I and mean, maybe technically they're. Other chicken, but no one right. would that. Okay. So we're going to say the one that we want to go to the devil to yeah. win. We'll count from three to, three to one and say which our favorite of this matchup was. Too bad, because the devil does like spicy stuff. Yeah. Okay. He's a, what, he, what, he's a heat seeker, is that what you're saying? The devil's the, a real the devil's, heat seeker. The devil's the ultimate heat oh, seeker. Yeah. The original heat seeker, for sure. <laughs> okay. Here we go. No rumblies in his double. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, he, no, he likes the rumblies. He likes to sh- he likes to be on the fuck. toilet. He's a sick fuck. Yeah, he likes diarrhea. He likes to sh- sh- he likes to be sitting on his toilet. Sure? I think he likes to inflict it on people. His toilet his toilet seat is as hot as a frying pan. <laughs> well, no, it's it's the mouth of sinners. It's the mouth oh, of the yeah, sinner. Okay, sinner. Wait, yeah, the devil doesn't inflict pain to himself, or does he? You know, he probably likes it too. Okay, he's into that. He's a freak. All right, here we go. Count down from three to one. Three, two, one. Wendy's. Wing stop. You fucker, Weiger. Hey, look, fuck I'm, you. I like. I would rather go to Wendy's than Wingstop. I think, based on this last experience, this head-to-head matchup, I think Wingstop had a better outing this than is Wendy's. Fucking garbage. With Wendy's rather- minus its its most valuable player, Wendy's is going without James Harden right now, and the Houston Rockets do not have a chance at a playoff series. This if is they don't such have James garbage Harden. shit. Hey, look, Wendy's is, is staying alive. I hope you're, you're the fucking mouth the devil shits into you, piece of shit. <laughs> Why are you getting mad at me? Because you be should have voted for arbiter. Wendy's. I have Wendy's in my heart. I love Wendy's. Do you think I'm happy about this? Do you think I'm I'm happy do you to remember see when Burger King? Excised? Do you remember when Burger King beat In and Out Burger? Yeah, that was bullshit. Yeah, and guess what? This is worse than that. This you is piece not. Of shit. This yes, is it not is even close to that. This is not, way worse. This is not even this close to that. What are you this talking is about? This that. is worse. This is not even close to that because also. Wendy's isn't even out of the competition. They're going down to the losers bracket. I don't want them in the losers bracket. They're against Church's Chicken and McDonald's. I fucking hate. In the championship too. and Burger King, which you added to the uh, maybe Burger King will, will beat Wendy's now. Fuck How'd you, you like that? That'd be turn about as fair play then. Wait, huh? Burger- and guess what? I would do what you did and just say like, eh, it doesn't matter. Wendy's is the Wait, one. Is, is Burger King in this? Yeah, Mitch had they're, Burger King. They're, they're in the losers bracket. They have a fried chicken sandwich. They have a fried chicken sandwich. They yeah. and they they have their their classic. Listen, I can't even talk about Burger King. I'm, I'm very not, mad. I'm not happy about this. There, nothing would make me happier than to look at the Dave Thomas Cup. At the end of this tournament, and see that engraved on it as the t- the 2017 champion is Wendy's. Wait, but like, would you honestly say you would rather have that Asiago Ranch than six different kinds of delicious wings? I mean, I yes. Mean, if we're really taking if, if, if you know if like, the Patriots lost their first round pick. Yeah, Brady did not play those four games. Right. I mean, it it happened, man. It happened. You know, and then like then the the court system. 
as much as we, it's good or bad, determined not that Goodell was right, but that right. he had the right to be wrong. Weiger set this up because he knows that I can't get mad at you, Selman. I love you. <laughs> I didn't set this up. I didn't set this up at all. I Look, this is not a thing. I would rather that Wendy's was competing on a fair playing field. I would much rather have that be the case. I'm going to like send you anonymous... Spicy chicken sandwiches all week <laughs> via whatever delivery service. Postmates. They'll just be arriving at your house at like random times. Oh, Jesus. So, uh, so that means the finals are set. My scene will be good. The finals are set. That will be next week for the first time ever in the tournament's two-year history. This is an announcement. You can participate in a fan vote to help determine the champion. Details will be coming on our Twitter at Doughboys Pod, so look out for that in the next week or so. The, the three but it's set. Are, so it's McNuggets. It's no, it's Wingstop, McDonald's versus Popeyes. Popeyes, insane versus TBD Fat Chance Kitchen winner. Oh, TBD Fat Chance versus Armin. Versus, yeah, versus Armin. Armin. Armin wants to be the champion. Yeah, Armin will be in there. <laughs> He's one of them. All right, it's time for a regular segment. Uh, I've got a mystery God. beverage, and Mitch and Selma must try to guess what it is. It's a rematch of the Weiger Challenge. Oh, I'll be right back. Oh, oh my God. It, so if I remember correctly, did Sel- was Selman the first person to beat me in the Weiger Challenge? No, I don't think I beat you. I you didn't beat lo- me? I think I lost. Oh, really? Okay. Then a little rematch. Are you excited, Selman? Do you like this segment? Sure. <laughs> Selman, your kids are off seeing Beauty and the Beast. Are we recording this or not? Yeah, we are. Oh, okay. Your, your kids are off watching Beauty and the Beast. Do you think you'll see the movie? No. Do you think that... Those type of movies are kind of the future, it seems like, right now. Yes. Just remakes of animated movies that we've, that we've already seen. Just nothing original will ever happen again. You think so? I don't uh, know. I mean, I mean, I guess the future will be big budget, IP branded, super safe things. Yeah. And then hopefully there'll be things like Get Out that are like made very inexpensively and passionate, new, fresh voice and... You know, people will, people love it. Should should I get out of Hollywood? Well, I saw you have the DVD collection for Parker Lewis Can't Lose on your coffee table. That's true. So, you know, maybe the best work has already been done. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I, I've given you some red Solo cups. Hey, Nick, you keep pushing your chair into my my mirror. Shit, man, I'm sorry. Jesus. I'm fucking this up. I'm so, I like, this is, this is the, the, the issue you're going to find, Mitch, with recording at your place is that I am going to gradually break it. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? Last, uh, do, uh, I, do, our, I, do I get to meet the cats afterwards? Yes, of course. On our last, on our bonus episode this week, I spilled a shamrock shake all over your table and floor. That's right. And right <laughs> now I'm, I'm scratching up and eventually shattering the mirror that's the on. The gigantic mirror that is a part of, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, that, I that glass shit. is going to rain on all over me and possibly kill me so there's that yeah, side what is, is that is that a crack up there what is that is that I built in or top did you put yeah. that in that's built in right it's built in yeah by the way shamrock shake asterix not a real shamrock shake new weirdo mcflurry version of shamrock shake mm. Mm. Not, wait really yeah there's nothing it's not the classic shamrock shake used to be this weird icy strange Thing like and now it's cre- it's, like, it's like a frappe. You think they changed we, the formula? Oh, we a hundred percent. We weirdly didn't talk about it much on the last episode. A failure of us. I didn't notice the. Would you, would I didn't you give it a drink or a stank? Yeah, uh, I say drink. I see. I say drink still. But but I I think I think they have switched some stuff up a little bit. Yeah, when, we were, when we were growing up, mm-hmm. it was like a weird, like the founder, powdery, ice strange concoction. Right. Yeah. And now it's super creamy. It's very like creamy. Like in the f- Frappuccino family. Yeah. Now I, that- I guess I haven't had enough of them to notice the shift. I, I, uh, do you remember I, bu- I bought everyone at the Simpsons Shamrock yeah. Shakes one day? And those were, were those real or I think those were like legit? I think maybe it was before they changed. Yeah. Mitch, know. is it possible you just walked in with 12 Shamrock <laughs> Shakes and they were like, hey, you brought enough for everybody. And you're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was also 24 Shamrock <laughs> Shakes. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you guys have some red solo cups with a mystery beverage inside. Uh, describe what you are seeing, smelling, and tasting as you I, go through. I think it. that we have some sort of tea here. Mitch, Mitch suspects a tea. And the rules of the Weiger Challenge is you guys uh, can take as much time as you like. Uh, you can ask questions. I'm not obligated to answer them. In fact, I usually won't answer them. And the winner will receive the balance of whatever container this beverage came in to take home with them. Okay, I think I have a guess of what it is. Okay, Mitch, go ahead. I think that I, I think that this is Arizona iced tea because I know Arizona iced tea. Okay. It may be Snapple and I might be wrong. And I think that it's a lemon diet 
flavor. That's what I was going to say. And now what? I was going to say lemon diet Snapple. Lemon diet Snapple is your guess, Selman? That's my only, that, that was my only thought. Mitch, you're, you're going with oh, lemon fuck. diet. No, I fucked myself because I said Arizona. No, what? I'll stick with Arizona. You're saying Arizona, lemon diet. Yep. Neither of you is 100% correct. It's definitely diet. However, Mitch, you have won the Weiger Challenge. Well, it is the news today. Arizona iced tea and lemonade, half and half. Oh, it's an Arnold, Arnold Palmer, Palmer, but it's a zero calorie Arnold Palmer. So you guys, okay. your guys' palates were on point. Very well, well done. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty good actually. You know, although if we can segue into dumbbells territory here, another subject that I love talking about dumbbells is, the fitness podcast dumbbells the fitness podcast Eugene and the Ryan. sister podcast the mm. yin to this yang or it's, on a, it's on a different network but the, we consider the, the ourselves life brothers to this death <laughs> right <laughs> um, you know, be, hey, without without evil there can be no good right uh i think if you really want to lose weight don't drink anything sweet even if it has zero yeah. calories i know I'm i think you're probably right i usually believe that yeah I, it could be crazy but I just so you're saying La just go Lacroix crazy? Yeah, Lacroix water or unsweetened iced tea. Those tea Java. I do love the unsweetened iced tea. I, I found like that's like I, I love. I don't love it, but I found that that's a drink I can tolerate as my flavored beverage, flavored mm -hmm. cold beverage of choice. This is this, this is this is a t this is a tough thing for me to give up, which I think I should. But maybe like, maybe I I'm going to give it up. I think just just try it, try it for a month mm -hmm. because I and this could be nonsense, but. I've read that like just even tasting sugar, even mm -hmm. though it doesn't technically have the calories, puts your body in a sugar kind of fat holding on to or metabolistically yeah. bad situation. I've heard that too. And I don't, it could just be more diet dogma nonsense, but as es Esther Pavitsky said, don't drink your calories. Right. I took that to heart. Although the fact that she only ate a fucking dessert and even tried to judge BJ's or whatever it was insane. No, no, I'm sorry. Wood Ranch. The Wood Ranch. So, yeah. I love Esther, but like you guys should, that's, well, where, Sus, where was Susser then? <laughs> we, she judged a restaurant based on a, a dessert yeah. only? Yeah. A Wood Ranch? Look, I, mean, I don't I mean, even like Wood Ranch. I, I disagree with Nick on oh that, boy. but like, like, I, Oh, Esther, we're calling you out. Calling you out. I, I'm, I'm not going to call Esther out. I, we, give, we give our guests a lot of leeway in terms of evaluating the chains, how they look. How they can you ever I'm have fun? Obviously, I'm not going to call her I'm out. I'm obviously insane in that I don't think, unless you've literally just, in the last one hour, eaten everything on the menu, <laughs> you can fully evaluate a restaurant. Can I also say, also, as the president of Doughboys, uh -huh. oh, right. Doughboys Corp, <laughs> uh, why are you have to listen to me? I am the president. Can I be Go one ahead. of on the board of directors? Oh, Un sure. Unpaid. We should. We, sure. we want to start selling so stock soon. <laughs> um, uh, like you know the way like they'll put like Morgan Freeman on the board of Coke, right? Like just <laughs> class it up a little bit, even though he's not a corporate monster. You and you and Morgan Freeman should be on the the Doughboys board. Um, they fly you first class these awesome retreats and like you know hmm. you'll get paid. Uh oh like, well, you know, that's out of the question. Uh, we can get you a Lyft coupon code. <laughs> <laughs> buy me some free wings. I would like it. Uh, uh, the man we met with, the accountant, mm -hmm. Nick Weiger's accountant, was telling him how much, how he's so not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's accountant was like, you're no fun, over and over again. He's like, this guy's no fun, huh? His accountant. Is, yeah, he want, said. But do you want your accountant to be pro fun? I mean, he's a great, Doug's a great guy, but he, he did at one point say, like, uh, I try to make uh, doing your taxes painless. Uh, Weiger always makes it painful. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he, he he really. Yeah, he, he roasted me pretty good. I mean, he is funnier than you. <laughs> I, I That's not a high bar to clear. No, um, it's a very high bar. There's a. Uh, 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 but yeah, he's he's a good guy. But you're right. I get I get properly roasted there. Um, just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. Today's email comes to us from Brian Dmuchowski. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Brian. Brian writes. I want to be the first to speak out in support of Weiger's aversion to buying popcorn and other concessions in a movie theater. I also do not like popcorn or other movie snacks. They're expensive, they stick in your teeth, are very loud to eat, and distracting when another moviegoer is ruffling a bag or aggressively chowing down. Movies, Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Movies are an art, and I, like Weiger, give them my undivided attention. Oh, fuck off. My, my question is related to this new wave of full-service movie theaters slash restaurants. 
These are more the upscale theaters that offer waiter service to your seat with a full menu of entrees, sandwiches, appetizers, and cocktails. I saw Lion in a theater like this. I love the film, but my experience was severely dampened by the patron next to me who was eating a full steak dinner and drinking a beer. <laughs> Plus, the waiter had to keep coming back and forth, blocking my view as this customer ordered more food. I personally would never order a full dinner to my seat. How do you guys feel about this? Movie theater restaurants too far or a new level of luxury for the movie going experience? I just want to address a couple of things. Go for it. Yes, people who bring in like bags, like plastic bags, and they're going through their plastic bags. Yes, that's annoying. It that's is annoying, rustling. Yeah. Popcorn is not popcorn. Pop- popcorn. <laughs> Pop- popcorn is not. You mean, lo- you mean popcorn for dogs? <laughs> Do- dog popcorn. Popcorn is not that loud. It's not. It's not loud. Here's here's the thing. You get a with, little crunch from it, but yeah, it's not that loud. It's not the, a little crunch. Shut. What are you talking? about? You get about? a little crunch. It's, it's not super loud. It's not. It's one of the. It's one of the quieter. It's much quiet. More quiet than chips. Yeah, I don't think bag I, of M and M's is more rusty. I don't than think pop. I've ever heard a person eating popcorn. Yes, in the theater. That is that is never an issue. Here's the issue with popcorn. Mm-hmm. That I've been, I think I said it right, that I have been having lately, trying to get myself in shape. It's a terrible, calorically, it's really bad if you get pop, popcorn oh, yeah. with butter. I have butter. a solution to that. Dumbbell. What? Hashtag dumbbells. What's that? Buy a bag of skinny pop. 100 calorie, buy a bag of skinny pop. Eat it before you, right before you go into the theater. It will quench your pop, desire yeah. for expensive you know, coconut oil, butter oil, cancer popcorn that they sell uh-huh. and you, you you will completely you will negate it I, I also always kind of have a case of the rumblies as nick says oh, after eating popcorn oh yeah that'll do it uh, with with the butter and you know what oh, now oh, i just rumblies. i always opt for like a a, a diet coke or oh, a water yeah. and uh a hot dog or a hot dog a hot dog <laughs> a hot dog you're over correcting now um <laughs> just pronounce it how it comes to you hot, it's fine hot dog <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, no, I, 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 I'm trying. I, I would rather have a hot dog. He calls it a pup dog for some reason. A pup dog <laughs> than than popcorn. I can't wait for you to go so far that you're now calling it a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, this guy is that. What he, he, he this guy, this guy is insane. It's an easy I, solution to his problem, which is go to the 99 percent of the theaters that do not serve steak. Yeah, it's yes. a, you went to a very strange upscale. They, I'm, I've seen some of these. They have like the AMC dining experience, which I haven't actually been to yet. There's the 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 Austin. Oh, what are they now? I can't remember the Austin Fat House. No, the the, the movie theaters in Alamo. The Alamo, Alamo Draft, Draft House. House. Yeah, yeah. Alamo the Alamo Fat Draft House. House, and they they do like kind of full service there. I gotta say this: they do such a good job delivering food that I never. It was not an. I saw the Force Awakens mm-hmm. for the first time. Me and John Ennis saw the Force Awakens together uh, when I was shooting something in Austin, mm-hmm. and. And we went, I went to an Alamo draft house for the first time and I got food and everyone around me got food and it was, it, it, they did such a good job with it that you didn't, you, it was not a, a disturbing at all during the movie. But the Alamo draft house is that, that's like a, a very small chain. There's like a few of them, right? Is yeah. there even more that there's, it's a small chain, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying this is a, a theater that serves food. Yeah. But I'm saying like, but, but my point where I was driving with that is that like, I, maybe this concept is not scalable. Mm-hmm. Like if they start doing that, uh, this at like every AMC or every Cinemark, you know, yeah. I feel like there's going to be just, it's going to be hard to get to the point where, where the service is that refined and the service has that level of attention to detail with not interrupting your theatrical experience. For sure. You know what I mean? But they, 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 they usually have those in sections. You know what I mean? You, right. You can sit oh, in the, okay. You can sit in the section upstairs that has like reclined seats and full service food and stuff. It's not like a, it's not like a thing where you're going to be like, it's mixed in between. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's either a certain section or a theater that it does all of it. I, I, I honestly don't think it's an issue. Yeah. I, I think that you wrote this email and this guy is a fake human being. <laughs> you think there's no Brian Demuchowski that he's a Weiger uh, shell account? Uh, yes, a hundred percent. Well, if he is, it's, it's a good question because it, as movie industry changes and economics change, like you know, and movies get more expensive, and how are you, how are these chains going to make money? And right. So, in one way, is to make the experience more geared towards an, an elite one percent, like the rest of the nightmare planet. Anyway, and um, this guy is clearly a ding dong for having gone to a place that serves is, is a restaurant in disguise. I will just say, my brother and I were in Cape Cod two years ago in Falmouth, and we went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. and we went to like the crappy little 
multiplex, mm-hmm. like eighties multiplex. And we went in and instead of chairs, it was tables and it was kind of kind of rudimentary tabletop electronic ordering of popcorn and hot dog and nachos and basic stupid kind of you know baseball stadium food right and beer and it was just the best experience we ever had yeah we were on tables it was on cape cod it was guardians of the galaxy and like we had beers just being brought to us and that sounds great what could have been more fun right we didn't know we we didn't even know we were buying that we walked right we'd already had dinner we just ate Chinese food, yeah, Pe- aka Peking ravioli, which they that's like in Boston when Chinese food they did like sell Chinese food to Americans for uh-huh. the first time in like the fifties and sixties. Like, what are dumplings? People won't eat that. No, just call them Peking ravioli. Mm-hmm. You know that you it know, worked, you know of course. About. Yes, yeah, I love them. God, I, the that word sounds good. Pot sticker was had, had not been invented yet, right? Anyway, so but just hearing Peking ravioli together that makes it like, oh, that's something I want to try. Yeah, it's, 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 you've had it a thousand times. Yeah, <laughs> Boston Chinese food is great. Well, it's so old school. It's just it's so Americanized. Right. I want to. Like, you saying that makes me want to just move to Cape Cod. I should move to Cape Cod at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Have your own little Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> I know one scene in that movie that I will probably try. <laughs> <laughs> What? I don't I, the gun scene. Uh, I don't think I saw it. Uh, I started to read the screenplay, but yeah, because the bored. the writers guild, uh, the the writers, right. the TV writers union and movie writers union, they'll just send you screenplays for movies that are nominated for awards. I feel like most of them just get thrown in the trash, but on occasion, I guess someone will read one. I, I can, penalize them. Like if you send me a free movie, I will try to nominate that movie. But if you send me movie and a screenplay. Forget it. Right. <laughs> Just this movie, please. <laughs> and no, I don't even want the, don't send me the code so I can watch it on my computer, even though it's an identical experience. Sometimes you get to keep it, though, if they send you the code. Like, it goes into your iTunes. It's true, but what you need is just for people to come to your house and see them kind of, you know, a little hoarded in a pile, and then right. you feel that, like, jealousy. That's the experience I want. You can't get that by no one's going to stumble upon your iTunes account. That's I'll, true. I'll say I've been in the WGA for just a, only a couple of years now, a few years. The Weight Gainers Association. The- <laughs> so sorry. So, so, so you no, know, you know I'm like pro health. Uh, no, Selman with a shack dunk. That was that was quite the dunk. <laughs> And also, I, that was very on your toes. That's why Selman is where he is, and Weiger and I are where we are. I just, I just got lucky, everyone. I just that got was lucky. So mean. I just got lucky. It's, it's all, it's all just randomness of chaos. The universe is chaos, people. The universe is chaos. The universe I'm trying. Is fucking I'm, chaos. A, I'm a bright light in this darkness. I am. No, I'm in no way special. I just, I can't believe stumbled I into said this crazy thing. Um. I wait. What was I saying? Uh, oh, WGA. I'm gonna, yes, I, I'm bringing home those those uh, those DVDs. I I'm, I'm a hero. Around yeah, bring holiday them to your time. mom. My mom, mom and then her sorry. friends and the friends. Her friends love the movies, and I get to share them with everybody. Yeah. Now the WGA is going to not give them to me anymore because I said this right no, now. No, no. <laughs> um, but anyway, has any movie ever made one extra dollar of revenue because it? Got a Writers Guild Award. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't one know. Person, one person, one human being, let alone nomination, said, it's, it's, oh, right. You know, like <laughs> that one extra little bit of writing on the ad, the little <laughs> laurel on it, right? It could be anything. I need these movies. It's a big <laughs> thing for me. I want to move to Cape Cod and be a shark hunter and hunt a sharks. Shark hunter? Yeah, like Quint in no, Jaws. Sharks are good. You don't want to kill sharks. The, even the great whites? They're, okay. No, okay. until they eat some townsfolk, don't leave them alone. Yeah, I'm not gonna kill. I'm not gonna really become a shark hunter for okay. God's sake. But sharks are our enemies. No, they're, they're not really our enemies. I feel like we like we just like. We'll this is where it turns. Alone. Everyone turns on me because of sharks. No, I, I feel like just like leave them alone. Let them do their own thing. I, I mean, mean, we've so been. Mer- think of how fun the ocean I would be believe, without sharks. I though. believe something like. 50 million sharks are killed by man a year. Like, it's, Google it. Yeah. And just in the nature of, like, horrible bottom dr- oh. dredge trawling fishing. Yeah, and there's a pretty, there's the pretty, you and know, the shark, shark fin soup, soup is pretty horrific. Then, oh, fuck you guys. Just, Wendy's lost already. Just, <laughs> if Wendy's had a spicy shark sandwich, that would be good. <laughs> I just want to say that if there were no sharks in the ocean, yeah. I, I, this is the truth. Yes. Imagine how fun the ocean would be if there were no sharks. Well... We'd be swimming. The we'd shark be... is the last thing that will injure you in the ocean, statistically speaking. What are the, the swordfish? Speak. 
No, just you're more likely to trip or drown. Or yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's it's accident. It's like winning the lottery in reverse. Any shark, even in a super sharky area. Right. Look, I understand fear, Mitch. Yes. It's a real thing. Fear is real, mm-hmm. and it's hard to change your fears. Be it of ghosts. Yes. Very scary. Or sharks, or, or the, the devil, or, the devil mm-hmm. or flabby, uninspired fried chicken sandwiches. <laughs> but that last one is haunting me today. So I'm not gonna try to convince you not to be scared of sharks i am scared of sharks because the idea, fear is is part of who we are and who we are how we are built i just openly swam in the ocean so much as a kid Although, did you say there's a that buddhist place around the corner yeah there's a buddhist place Maybe you should go there and start meditating mm, i could do that it's right actually there. yeah it's so close I might do that. That's not a that's it's, not a bad idea. So and now people now people know where I live. <laughs> no, there's, there's, the city is full of Buddhist places. Well, so. you say the street you live on on the podcast. Shut up, Weiger. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, um, I just want to say this. Yeah. Okay. The Sharks. the bad like those the problem with movies are people who bring in the bags. Oh, with, right. I don't mind people bringing in food to the theater because right. whatever you want to save some money, that's fine. But the rustly bags, plastic bags that you bring them in, they've got to go. You it can't do that anymore. That's that's insane. Put them in your purse or your backpack or your pockets or whatever. Two, I want to say that way more of an issue with movies are people talking yeah. and people using their phones. And I went and saw the founder. I'm trying to think what age group I think is the worst at talking. I think it is teenagers no matter what. Right. But there every age group is very very bad and 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 if you use your if you use your phone in the movie theater i'm sorry but you're a fucking asshole don't use your fucking phone in the movie theater i'm sick of it you gotta stop using your fucking phone in the movie theater yeah the lights wait until it's over when when the lights go down you put your phone away you put it on silent and if you have an emergency number that you have, unsilent that. And if you get a call, leave the theater and go talk to them. But that's part of the fun of the the theater experience for me is just like the uh, like it's oh it's a rare situation where I'm going to give something my undivided attention yes. for a set amount of time. I agree. Um, yeah, Brian, I know you are a real boy. Uh, I would say that it just sounds like you you patronize the wrong theater as someone was going towards it. I think there's a happy medium between places that offer full service and places that are just. Offering you a fucking steak dinner. Um, if you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. And to get their Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, subscribe at patreon.com slash doughboys. Matt Selman, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Anything you would like to plug at this point? Well, not really. Okay. Um, just, I did think, just one more idiotic comment on the last topic, which is, although the, the movie experience can be ruined by rude people mm-hmm. in, you know, keep, keep this in mind. There is no experience so elevated that it cannot be ruined by a rude person, mm. i.e. like an unbelievably expensive theater ticket for Hamilton or right. a basketball game or a football ticket or a first class airline experience. Again, this is not me doing that one percent or stuff, but like the number of times that people I know have had like rarefied once in a lifetime experiences ruined by an inconsiderate person. Is, is astounding. Let, where people are, is, 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 is where you think you're going and you never think about it going like, oh my God, I'm, I've never seen Hamilton. But like, whatever. I just paid a thousand dollars to go see Hamilton. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see Hamilton. And like, drunk asshole is talking to Hamilton. Like that has happened during the show. It's That's so crazy. crazy. Or like, I've got floor seats at right. the uh, Rockets Clippers game. And some inconsiderate oaf just dumped Blake Griffin's private Gatorade yeah, junk on my yeah. lap. <laughs> well, actually, once I was there, these are the, these are, <laughs> and you know they have like that balm that like for their hands, that, yeah, their, their hands get sweaty. That balm got in my popcorn a little bit. Oh my god, <laughs> That's, what a disaster! Okay, let's. I'm gonna be murdered. <laughs> Look, I say bring the revolution. So, kill if, you, if, if revolution comes and it means killing me, I'm all for it. Yeah, hey, I, I will. I will see to it that you are spared because I will. I'll probably be one of the leaders of the revolution, right? Right, Mitch. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> you mean the robot revolution? <laughs> um, you know what? People just need to be more considerate all around. Be yeah. more considerate. You're right. Yeah, Mitch, I mean, you're right. That's a great note to end on. I agree. And eat skinny pop before going to the movie. Yes. Or you'll join the Weight Gainers Association. <laughs> <laughs> They'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Thank you. Thank you.